Now that the baseball season is finally over, he can go back to not watching baseball. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on the choice. They're going to mandate you. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. Very funny comedian Eric Schwartz is in studio. He's got a special. It's coming out on YouTube November 24th called Delivery, and it's a multimedia experience. I watch it. I was wildly impressed by it. So uh, good to see you, and congratulations. Thank you. Wow, that's a that's a huge thing to hear that from you. Wildly impressed. <laughs> I was. It's I. You know, there's a lot of specials where you go, oh, "That was funny," or "That wasn't funny." This is funny, but it's impressive Thank as you. well because Thank you. Um, I don't quite know how to describe it. But there's lots going on. It's not just a guy in a microphone. Right. I I don't do that. <laughs> just a guy in the microphone. I feel like you know. I started as a as a DJ, and then I was like, you know what? I want to make the performance that I do in stand up a lot of fun. And so I just kept adding like cool things that I could figure out how to do on stage and that's what you saw. But lots of cues, lots of lighting cues and visual cues and lots of sort of syncing. I mean lots of performance, but it seems like lots of rehearsal as well. Yeah, uh it was very expensive. Uh <laughs> I had to rent this this venue uh more than once i had to do rehearsals i had you know i had multimedia on 13 led video walls i designed uh, a specific like um video presentation that fit on those screens yeah uh it's musical it's stand up at its core but there's multimedia and music as well like custom animation and all the screens So yeah. did you just honcho this whole thing yourself? Is this all all you? Yeah. Like, if this doesn't succeed, I'm losing my house. Like, <laughs> yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. So, good. And, you know, I, I mean, not good, but you bet on yourself. Th- mm-hmm. That's exactly the phrase that uh, a wise man that we both know told me. Uh, his name is Joe Coy, and I used to open for him. And he goes, you got to bet on yourself. And that was my whole, that was my whole mantra going through this. Well, I mean, Joe did the same thing several years ago. His story was he was trying to get deals with Netflix or HBO and sort of the usual suspects. And then he just went out and financed his own special and then sold it. Right. And then uh, I'm putting mine on YouTube. So (laughs) let's go, people. That's why I'm here on the Adam Carolla show to let you guys know to watch that special the day after Thanksgiving. Black Friday, Schwartz, my last name, means black. Let's go. Let's That's go. Right. Yeah, and <laughs> also Friday. the um, I, I, it's the kind of stand-up special you can watch with your kids. Uh, it's clean. I think it's clean. It's not clean. I'm just really nice. Oh, that yeah. that's, you seem clean. You, I seem clean. Like <laughs> it, that's true. Like people think I'm clean. I'm not super clean. There are clean moments. People also, when I enter a room, think I'm vegan. I don't know mm. what it is. Yeah, I have a vegan face. It's fit. Yeah, or something. <laughs> Your yeah, I could be eating a turkey sandwich in front of people, and they'd be like, "Are you vegan?" Right now, turkey is not on the list. Yeah, I you exude veganism. <laughs> yeah, I know, <laughs> which is probably good for an ass kicking in certain yeah. parts of this country as well. Oh, I think I've Moby had it. did it. <clears throat> oh, is Moby. it Moby? Because oh, I wear glasses and I'm bald. Yeah, yeah, Moby I, got you into the vegan hamper. Yeah, and you know, I'll say like people do think we look. It's, they just see shapes. You know what I yes. mean? Yes. Because we're bald with glasses. Like, I'm much better looking than Moby. He would admit yeah, that. Yeah, you are. He would admit that. You've he, got at least seven inches on Moby, height-wise. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm like, downstairs. Yeah. you seen us both naked? Not so <laughs> much. But uh, Moby's diminutive. Is he? Man, yes. He's, he's, he's the opposite of a Moby. Yeah, uh, I was going to say. think about it, he's, 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 I never really thought about it, but Moby Dick is a huge whale right and moby is very small so he's small and he goes instead of nicknaming myself dick right i'm gonna say moby i'm gonna go with moby that's creative that's creativity or maybe he was like a mobile dj or something i don't know we're we're going too deep into moby here but uh (laughs) you shot it at the avalon Yes, <clears throat> which is a historic Hollywood venue. It's on on a uh, Vine, Hollywood mm-hmm. and Vine. Um, you know, I'd seen a lot of stuff. I'd gone there like growing up. It used to be called the Palace. Yes, yeah. and it's the only venue in LA that had these LED video walls. That's why I did it there. Mm-hmm. And so that yeah, they're great, great over there. 
the Dan Band actually shot their special there way back in the day, and I'm like, okay, so I know music and comedy go over well there. So. Yeah, I've seen I've seen the Dan Band there back yeah. in the day. I saw not the special, but them, and I saw the Boston's there back in the day, and it was actually the venue for one of my first very rare paying stand up gigs a million years ago. There was. Um, I think it was Halloween or Christmas. I can't remember what it was, but it's like I got paid. You know, when you get paid to do stand up for the first time the or best. any kind of comedy, it was like it was a thing, you know, like I don't, you know, 75 bucks or something. But um, all I remember is so I have some stories, some palace stories. One is the guy who was the headliner was a comedian. I brought him up before. Best known as the Zima guy. The Zima. Zima. Oh. The Zima guy. He had a hat and he was kind of cute. And he was had like it was one of those in the 80s when like comedians had to have, you had to pick a style. Okay. You know what I mean? Like there's no style anymore. <laughs> well, like it's like haircuts. You know what I mean? Right. I got one haircut. You got no haircut. Right. Chris got another. Dawson has a ponytail. Ugh. But, <laughs> but the point is this. The, the, but the. But the point is, is you had to kind of pick a lane. Are you like tough guy comedian? Are you right. gay comedian? Are you friends to the ladies comedian? Like, like he had his. This is the fedora thing. comedian, like a yeah, character, like, a gimmick yeah, or something. You can find a picture of the comedian who was the Zima. He did the his breakthrough was he was the guy for Zima. Yeah. Wow. He'd do these Zima commercials. Yeah, there he is. Oh, uh, and what the hell is Roger this? Cabler? Roger Cabler, and he had some heat because he was the Zima guy, and we're backstage, like in the office of like the manager who was like cutting the checks, and he does impersonations. Robert Cabler, known for uh, Peter Falk, oh, was one of his one of his uh, one of his guys that he did, and I like overheard him talking, like like he's like, well, I'm gonna open up, I'm gonna do about you know, five, 10 minutes of Peter Falk stuff and then blah, blah, blah. And, but I was opening for him. So I overheard it. And then I walked into the room and the, the manager guy's like, I said, what do you got? And he goes, you know, do 10 minutes. And I go, yeah, yeah, I'll do, I'll just do my Peter Falk stuff at the beginning and kind of get that out of the way. And he was like, what? Roger Cable was like, you can't do your Peter Falk <laughs> stuff. And I go, well, that's kind of my act. Yeah. And he goes, uh, no, you can't open for me and do Peter Falk because that's what I do. And I'm like, well, that's what I got. You know, <laughs> that's my act. And you should have known that. And, you know, when you get a little panicked, you tend to believe things. You know, yeah. so I kept this going for a while. Oh my with, God. with him, but um, I don't do a Peter Falk. But what happened, Columbo. To, what happened to him? Did he go away with Zima? Like... I think he he went out with Zima. I mean, well, Zima. I don't know. I, you know, he's probably working cruise ships and traveling around. And he's a and Zima stuff. guy. He owns those cruise. Zima's ships. like he's... the MySpace of malt liquor. Yes, you know. Yes, it was big, it huge, was. and then nothing. Yeah, it was. It was big. Maybe Tequiza knocked it off its yeah, perch. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Maybe yeah. Tequiza. Do you remember Tequiza? No. Te I, I think Zima was around first, and then Tequiza made a run at him, which is. Terrible Zima name. with the name tequila in it or something. These are like malt beverages yeah. or something they would they would call them. Um, but I pretty much he was the Zima guy and got got like he was, you know, you could be the guy. Like um, God, what was the Big Brother passed away with the bald head? It was like the uh, Miller High Life guy, you know. Oh right, like, right. He, God, I'll think of his name is in my movie, but um, yeah. So that was that. Yeah. Um, Wendell Middlebrook. It was like as big as White Claw Wendell Middlebrook. Yeah, sweet guy. Just died at, you know, 37 and a half or something. But he was a, I did a movie with him. A super sweet guy. But um, I had one of the, the strangest, most harrowing nights of my life at that venue. What happened? I want to know what happened. And it, it, this is a sort of you make the call. Like okay. you, you guys tell me what you would do in this situation. I went to the Pretty in Pink premiere up the street, 1986, I think we figured out. Okay. Uh, the after party was at the Palace. Um, Star-studded affair. Barbara Bach, Daisy Duke was there. 
Ooh. I remember. Uh, and I drove my super loud, sort of hot rodded out Datsun Z car, like super just turn the key and like, blah, 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 you know, <laughs> big open pipes. And it, it was a loud uh, triple Weber carbs, you know, no catalytic converter, no mufflers, just a big loud beast. But I was there with my roommate and he was going to be the designated driver. And so um, that meant, and, and the drinks were free. So I was like poor and I was like free booze. And drinks were like a big ticket item when I was poor, when I was like 22, you know. And um, I said, well, I'm just going to pound as many greyhounds as I can. Nice. And uh, I must have pounded like 14 greyhounds or something. <laughs> And my friend, my designated driver friend, hooked up with what I'm assume is an overweight chick and left. And okay. didn't tell me, pre-cell phones, had no idea where it was. But at some point, the palace completely just dissipated and there was nobody in there but me, my drunken ass. <laughs> pre, and this is pre-Uber and pre, I didn't even know, I couldn't even afford a taxi. I didn't have 10 bucks on me, you know, and I was wasted. Right, and I parked up the hill because that's right on the bottom of that hill. Yeah, by Argyle. Yeah, and I yeah. parked up the hill in an open parking lot, and it started to pour. It started raining, like teeming, like it doesn't even rain this way in Los Angeles. But it was just pouring, and I staggered up the street, and I turned the corner to my where my car was parked, and the parking lot was completely empty, except for my car and a cop car, which was parked right next to it. Oh, perfect. And I just stood there in the pouring rain. There is no, there wasn't like a Starbucks I could dip into and kill some time. Or I just stood in the pouring rain with no umbrella. And I just looked at the car. And the cop car, the windows were fogged over. And I was like, what is this? What is this? Is this guy staking me out? Is it like, what? What's happening? I don't know. Yeah. I'm buzzed. Bad. I don't know where to go. Cop is hooking up in there? He's getting a blowjob in there. <laughs> like, I don't know. So I just go, I walk over and I climb my car and I shut the door and I just sit there. And I was like, Does, is he waiting for me to turn this car over? Because it's so goddamn loud. But if I start this car, is he going to just hit his rollers? It's right yeah. next to me. Yeah. And I'm just going to be destroyed because there's no way I'm passing any kind of breathalyzer or anything. And I just sat in my car while, while it rained. And I just, at some point, I was like, I'm turning the key. I'm just going to fire it up. And I fired it up and I just sat there and I was like looking at the car and the windows were fogged over in the cop car. And I, I, just, I just made my way home. Thank God I lived close and it was raining so hard that everyone was just going 10 miles an hour all the way, all the way home. I think I threw up in the bathtub and then may have slept in the bathtub. I'm not sure. I have no idea to this day what that cop car was doing. Maybe I he was at the party, too. I, there wasn't anybody else in that party. Maybe hooked up with Catherine Bach. Yeah. Daisy Duke or Maybe something. Maybe he was in a, in a convertible Wrangler somewhere. Yeah. You know? Jumping a bridge that went exactly. out. Exactly. Yeah. Never enough uh, protesting, whether it's Smoking the Bandit or the Dukes of Hazard when the bridge is out. Yeah. And then... He, Whoever's driving the car says to their patcher, hang on. They just hang on. They don't go, are you fucking high? There is no bridge. We're not. No. You know, they grab the keys and throw them out yeah. the window or just grab the steering wheel and go, we're, we're not. Just get out of the car. That's an open ravine. There's a big yeah. sign that says bridge down. I'm not just hanging on. <laughs> I'm protesting. I'm letting my feelings be heard. Yeah. I mean, and all that money that they spent on the police department should have been going to the roads. Yes. You know, like to Boss the Hog making way too much money driving a convertible. El Dorado. El Dorado. You know, yep. you know what I mean? Like, you got you to gotta do the roads first, <laughs> baby. And at some point, you got to fire your sidekick, Enos. Yeah. Because all Enos did was fuck things up for Boss Hog every single episode. And he just hit him with his hat at the end. But he never got shit canned. Now, who, now, Enos and Roscoe P. Coltrane, were they related? Because they were both dumb. Yeah. They were both the bumbling character, you know? Of Hazard. Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't know. It seemed like could have been one of those brother-in-law situations, like in Smoking the Bandit. Because actually, the Dukes of Hazard probably lifted from Smoking the Bandit, like half half the storylines and half the premises. Yeah, I wasn't a Smoking the Bandit because I think I was. That was maybe a little bit before my time. But that, but Dukes of Hazard. I didn't know, like as a, as a little Jewish kid, that like the uh, Confederate flag probably, you know, but that's not something that was welcoming to me. But I love that show. That I show. think the show is pretty inclusive. It wasn't. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was. Inclusive. The show was as a white kid, not non-Jew. Yeah, growing up in the San Fernando Valley. So you grew up in outside of Los Angeles, right? Thousand Oaks. So I was, you know, what everyone thinks is the valley, but it's the Conejo Valley. Uh-huh. It's like the next valley up from the yeah. San Fernando. It's pretty rural out there when you grew up, right? Yeah, it was. That's actually where they shot a lot of Dukes at Hazard. Was Aha, like that's why area. you settled there. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I love this it's place. Rude. It looks like where I live. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, oh, Dukes. Goo, goo, goo. That was the best. The best. <laughs> Did you have thoughts about the Confederate flag when you were young watching yeah, I, that? I think when I got a little bit older, like my mom was saying, you know, they use the Confederate flag. I don't want to get you those toys. They have a Confederate flag on there. So she, I think she was a little early to that, you know? Well, was it was was the roof of their car, Yeah, but their, the horn honk could have been racist, too. The Dixie sound? Yeah. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Oh, wait. You do it. That's your thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> sound <ahead>. effects. <laughs> Put a little beatbox behind okay. it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you got the special. Yeah. You shot it yourself. Yeah. It looks amazing. Thank you. And uh, we can support people like you by watching it, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. You watch it. If you want to come see another show, you come buy a ticket. That's how I make my money back is I fill my rooms up. That's the whole reason I did this is to, you know, when I was touring with Joe, his audience was so responsive to me. I go, you know, there's a big audience out here for me. I got to make something that will keep me in front of them, you know? How, what's Joe think of the special? Have you shown it to him yet? I don't think he no, he has not seen it yet. Oh, well, we got to make but that happen. I think he's going to love it. I mean, I think he's going to love it. How awesome was it touring the world with Joe Coy? It was 100% awesome. A thousand percent awesome. It was his audience is great. Yeah. And he's great. Yeah. And we went to six countries in like nine months. Wow. It felt so much longer. Because we had, it was so dense, compact with like, we went to Philippines, we went to Australia, Dubai, New Zealand, Canada, and then all over the US. And then the pandemic kind of like, you know, that's when we stopped. Um, but yeah, it was like, I mean, I, I figured it out. I was in front of more people in those nine months than I had been in my career within like three years. Yeah, it was incredible. crazy. Like hundreds of, a hundred thousand or more people I was in front of. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, you made a remix of our intro. I was just messing around for an hour this morning. <laughs> this is his, uh, his DJ background. Huh? Well, <laughs> it's funny. I was talking to uh, Dicky from the Boston's today. Actually, I didn't even oh, wow. know this, but I spoke to him today. Yeah, I just I I literally just put it together. Oh, you got it. got adam carolla the podcast controller you know that his podcast is older than all of you newbies he's the one to be a no, no, just freestyling dawson you're out okay yeah hey i know you're not really into hip-hop but you know no no but i don't appreciate it you don't, <laughs> you don't appreciate it you don't appreciate that i remixed your song no this i like okay okay i just thought i would you know I listen to you and I go, what can I do? What can I what can I put the little the Eric Schwartz spin on it? So well, you did, that. and I appreciate yeah. it. Wait, All right. Wait, so your DJ background, because I mean, Adam has has a lot of thoughts on DJs. It's actually just really one thought on DJs. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'd love for you to. Defend. I have no respect for them either. Oh, really? No, no. Let's. Uh, I, okay. I will tell you what. I will tell you what I think. Yeah. Okay. What's well, your question? Well, it's just, can you? Can you defend DJs and like, what is it? Why are they so revered? And what is, is it difficult? Now, here's the thing. DJs, I I would say like, I I remember like getting women 
from DJing. Mm. And I thought, what? I <laughs> Like, I don't deserve this. I'm playing other people's recorded music. Like, what what it is, is that you're creating an, an atmosphere, an environment, uh, like a mood. Mm-hmm. Because when you listen to music, you're like, okay. And then the, the, I think the most important thing for a DJ is like your song selection. The skills, there are DJs with a lot of skills. Like, for example, DJ Jazzy Jeff. He's amazing with how he can scratch, how he can right. mix and stuff like that. Um, so that is a skill thing. Turntable lists, there are people. But most DJs that you see, you're right. Like... They're, they're, they're hitting the sync button, especially now. They don't even use records. They don't even, they use a uh, Serato. Programs which just is, do it for them, yeah. A pro, they have a sync button on it, and they don't even have to. Like don't match have, the beat or anything? Yeah. So, like, I recently DJed for fun, and I was not using that. I didn't even know it, it was on there. And another DJ saw me, and he was like, hey, you're not using the sync button? I've never seen that before. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, so, it, it's now it's even less of a big deal than when I did it. You know, um, but I do have a lot of respect for DJs. DJs have evolved into producers and that's, that is a, that's a craft. That's a, that's a, that's an art form that is like, not everybody can do that. My DJ beef is when like Aoki, what's his name? Steve Steve Aoki like hits the button and then he goes outside, it goes out front with a sheet cake (laughs) and starts throwing it (laughs) at people. It's like this thing. But if I saw Led Zeppelin, and they just hit a button, and everyone took put their instruments on the floor, and then came out with a can of whipped cream. I'd be like, "The fuck am I paying for this for?" I agree. I okay. agree. It's that's a, the, at that point you're a curator. I mm. m- here's my DJ, my number one DJ beef. It's not with the DJ themselves. It's mm. who hired them. I have been to a million like old guy sales department radio guy you know whatever and they go we'll get a dj and then the dj just pumps the jams and people are trying to have a conversation but you can't hear Mm -hmm. and at these things it's those i want to introduce you uh this is uh you know bob francis is from uh, mckenna bmw yeah have come over here talk to him for a minute it's like i can't hear his fucking wife's name like you should have never hired a dj for this right that's that's my normal, that's my number one beef. Yeah, that's not the DJ's fault. That's yes. that's the person hiring a DJ. All right, so I got a uh, another hypothetical, a couple, uh, what would you do? Cool. We sort of went through it with the cop car and the Z car, but um, this happened to me over the weekend, and I'm curious how you would handle this. Okay. Um, I, A, I drove my electric vehicle to Vegas. Okay. And I had to stop in Barstow and charge it. Okay. Fine. Um, but but I did make it. I drove an electric car to Vegas and back. So everyone is like range anxiety or you can't do it or, you know, I can't buy an electric car because I can't make it to Vegas or wherever. You can. You just have to kind of map it out a little bit. But um, so I'm in Vegas. Vegas has... Vegas, uh, there's Henderson, and then there's like another county. One of them uses the flashing left arrow, which means turn when it's safe. And the other just has the red arrow, even when the signal is green, which drives me nuts. It's like I can tell if a society's evolved by whether it's flat. Like Pasadena, California has the blinking arrow, which is, hey, citizen, you decide whether you want to turn left or not when we the like signal that. is green, like you do at every other intersection, but we're not going to stop you from turning by saying, by staying solid red, but Vegas, it stays solid red. And there's a whole bunch of cars, two lanes turning left on a street behind Caesars. And there's the red arrow and there's no cars coming. And of course, everyone's piling up and there's cars four or five cars in front of me and 25 cars behind me because the fucking thing won't blink and there are no cars coming. Anyone could have just turned. So now the the signal completely cycles from green and turns red and the, the, the red arrow never changes. We're all just sitting there. Then it cycles again, turns green, goes through again and turns red and the red arrow remains and nobody's moving. And it starts on the third cycle, and I get on the horn. I'm like, look, something's broken. Yeah. 
or this shit's been hacked by AI. Either way, I'm not fucking sitting here. Let's do this. So I start honking my horn from about four cars back, and God bless them, they start going through the red arrow. Well, the signal's green and the arrow's red, so everyone's piling through. By the time I get to the intersection, now the signal turns red and the arrow's red. And I stop, and the guy behind me starts honking, like, hey, I thought we were doing this. And I'm like, we are, but we're we're doing it while the signal's green. Now I'm just going into an intersection that is green on the other side. So you don't get to honk at me for that. So I stopped, and I saw no one was coming, and then I just ran the light and the arrow at that point. So what do you do? At that point. I think you handled it correctly. You think so? Because you went through the cycle three times, three times the charm, where you go, okay, I'm going. You you inspired people to do the right thing, which was the wrong thing, but also the right thing. <laughs> and Can, then... Is there any reason why those arrows are staying red in 2000 and almost 24? Can we just blink them blink all? Em. Just blink them. We're they, smart they enough. Do it. We, we earned our driver's license, so we, we know we can make decisions and keep traffic going. Well, just do the same thing at the intersection that had no arrow. Just wait till it's safe, and then you turn, and then everyone wouldn't get all blocked up and spilled out into the left lane and everything. It's Why are we picking and choosing which intersections you do this? It's insane. It's driving me nuts. I've been yelling about it for 25 years on the air. No one will will listen. You did the right thing, man. If anyone knows cars and the road, it's Adam Carolla. You got... Say that again. If anyone knows cars and the road... It's Adam motherfucking Corolla. Put a beat behind it. If anyone knows the cars, anyone knows the roads, it's Adam Corolla, Adam Corolla, Adam Corolla. Thank Dude, you. I, on the way in today, I saw a driver do something that I, I haven't seen in a while, and it was really weird. Just straight up through trash outside of his car on the freeway, just dropped it in traffic. Wow. Just straight up littered. Like the crying Indian like was, saw. Yeah. It's like the 80s. I know. It was old school. Wow. I do. I, I will that. say I never do that except sometimes if it's biodegradable within a month. Like a banana peel? Yeah, I've done a banana peel. I've done a, an apple core. I'm okay yeah, with that. In a That's bush. That's okay. In a, a bush. bush. Yeah. Yes. It's a com- it'll be compost later. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the, this, uh, this is like a box. Like he unboxed something and threw the box outside of his window. Ugh. I that's hate like, that. Yeah, that's people a don't tell. do that anymore. That's a bad person. Nah, Pacific yeah, Garbage gross. Patch. I had to look at what he looked like. I, I, I had to profile. I had to know. And what, what was he? What did we find out? Um, just an older like, Mexican guy. I think. Oh, okay. oh, I mean, it was foreign, but... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a cultural thing. But, I mean, there's enough garbage on the freeways to, I, to think like, oh, okay, this happens all the time, but seeing it... Yeah, I agree. Hurt. It's an offense. It hurt. Man, there's right. countries that they don't do... Like, when I was in Dubai, not one piece of trash. Yeah. Not one piece of trash anywhere. They'll Ooh. fucking cane your ass yeah. if you throw McDonald's <laughs> on the ground. All right. Another another hypothetical. Okay. What would you do? I like these. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's take a quick break, then we'll come back, and then I'll ask you my third hypothetical right after this. Simply safe. There's no wrong time to protect your home, but uh, this fall, well, that's an especially good time because you can get up to 50% off a brand new Simply Safe home security system. Best home security system of 2023, so says U.S. News and World Report. We've always used these guys. Uh, They've been with us for a million years. They're a great company. Stuff works, very ergonomic. Set it up yourself, and it's fast. 24-7 professional monitoring, under a buck a day, half the cost of traditional home security systems. Money back, guarantee. You get a 60-day risk-free trial. If you don't love it, Return your entire system for a full refund and for a limited time. Save 50% off of any new system with Fast Protect Plan. Visit Simply Safe. That's right. SimplySafe.com. Two eyes in there. SimplySafe.com slash Adam. Get that 50% off. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Stamps.com. Yeah, Stamps.com. Add this to your wish list this year because they've got over 1 million businesses save money and time during the holidays, especially uh, the rush, the holiday rush. For over 25 years, Stamps.com has been helping businesses. We use them. We've always used them. It comes with a free scale and the thing goes up to like 60 or 80 pounds too. Um, we've used them to send out merch, books, paperwork, paperwork. 
It's like having your own personal post office and now taking care of orders on the go is even easier with Stamps.com's mobile app. Need a package pickup? Just schedule it through the Stamps.com dashboard. Give your business the gift of Stamps.com so mailing and shipping is covered this holiday season. Use promo code ADAM for a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale. No commitments, no contracts. So give it a try. What do you got to lose? Go to stamps.com. It really is a great service. Go to stamps.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the home page, and enter the code Adam. I got to go to the Philippines. The people, they made me feel so tall. I was just reaching stuff that didn't need to be reached just to feel valuable. I like to learn about the culture. When I go to a place, I want to learn about the culture. You know, I got to Philippines and I learned this thing. Somebody told me that the Filipinos actually invented the yo-yo. Yeah, they did not invent it as a toy. They invented it as a weapon of war. And I was like, oh, that explains how the country got overtaken by the Spanish. Eric Schwartz is on the Adam Carolla Show. Live dates at ericschwartzlive.com <laughs> and also the special coming out on YouTube November 24th. All right, hypothetical. Okay. I'm putting together a theory. It's, uh, it's an uncomfortable theory for many Americans, but that's my job. Here we I go. say the uncomfortable part out loud. Um, People in positions, uh, the sort of gatekeepers, the guards, the information people, sort of the airport security, they're amongst the angriest people I've, I've met. They used to be polite and friendly, and they are, ironically, when you go to the airport and there's a volunteer, that guy's the friendliest guy in the airport. The chick next to him who's getting paid is a bitch. The volunteers, we go to these airports, you see these retired guys sometimes, like old timer kind of guy with the big belt buckle. And he's like, oh, uh, yeah, well, if you go down to the uh, C terminal and see where the chili sign is and just turn right, those guys are always friendly. They're but, doing it for the human contact. Yeah, they're, they're, they're friendly. They're not doing it for the pay. Right. But I've noticed, and I, I think it makes sense. I have noticed a predominantly, uh, I'd say, majority of black older females. Oh, in now these, you're going to get me canceled by association, <laughs> right? Well, <laughs> All right. They're not happy because we keep telling them what a horrible racist society we're in, uh, and we're telling them we hate black people, and then we hate females, and then what, Mr. Honky's it? coming up for some information, and there's a little attitude being right. thrown around. This weed does not include weed. me. I do not hate black women. No, society. Oh, society. All no, right. society doesn't care. The royal okay. we, the three of us. Okay. The, the truth is, society <laughs> doesn't have enough time to be racist. Right. It's, it's a calorie burner. Okay. I, I would be racist, but it's a waste of my time. It's a mm. calorie burner. Okay. I, I got too much I, I worry about, I'm too, I'm too much of a narcissist to be racist. Okay. That's, that's too much time on... Whatever, I don't even know what Chris is. You know what I mean? But I'm going to spend a bunch of time Fine. digging into his yo-yo culture. <laughs> <over> there. <laughs> Call back. Maybe you, maybe you guys just saw what the Australians were doing with the boomerang and were like, that's a little too much fun. Why do we have to let it go? Well, yeah, yeah, let's just put a four-foot leash, leash on this shit. Yeah. See if we can do it this way. And then that Never turned lose it. it now. Then that, but eventually gave way to walking the dog and the cats the in the cats cradle. cradle. Yeah. yeah, that that stuff. Because it's, it's not always wartime. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> you, know I mean? sometimes you got to practice. You got to practice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I am at the Caesar's Palace. Um, I'm at the the mall, the big long mall oh, sure. that has all the restaurants and the Gucci store and the Prada store. Are it's you a, outside or are you inside? Uh, we don't know. I look up, I see sky. <laughs> I yeah, know, right. clouds. But I also see a vent duct up there that's painted <laughs> like sky. So now I'm suspicious, you know. This thing is never ending. I mean, it goes on for a mile and a half. Okay. So I go to the information kiosk. Decent size, manned by uh, a couple of dudes and a couple of women we spoke of. And I walk up and I go, uh, is there a bathroom somewhere in here I can use? And the uh, angry woman of color who's looking at her phone the whole time, she didn't even look up. She goes, 
four doors down. And she just puts her, puts her arm out yeah. in a direction. I go, oh, okay. <laughs> That's it. Can't so response, I start yeah. walking. So I start enough. walking in the direction of her arm. And I get four doors, and I get eight doors, and I get 22 doors, and I get like 86 doors down. And I'm like, there's no bathroom back. <laughs> anywhere down here at all. Oh. There's, there's nothing down here. It's just store after store, eatery after eatery, you know, sweet shop and, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, buy a Rolex. And so I get about 200 yards down and I just stop. And I think, eh, car's charging in the back. I got time. I'm going to go back and I'm going to, I'm going to ask her (laughs) in as polite a way as I can, what she meant by four doors down when she pointed that way. So I went walking back and there she was and I started walking to her, but she's looking at her phone, you know, on the clock and a dude, a brother, a 40 year old guy. He like slides in. He's like, oh, hey, Adam Carolla. Now, now I'm screwed because I've, I've been made. You know, yeah. he wants to get a selfie. We do the selfie. And I go, uh, where is the bathroom from here to the dude? And he goes, all the way to the end, up the escalator, oh. turn to the right. I'm like, oh, man. well, how do we get four doors down? Like, but, but it means like a lot of people you deal with want you to get out of their face. They're like, beat it, but they don't. Is you, the four doors down the equivalent to, oh, let me see if we have that size in the back. You go back, wait a couple seconds, come back out. It's basically shoe. We just get out of right, here. Do don't you ever, get a job at the information hut if that's if that's your demeanor. Do you ever if, think about this? Maybe she also knew you were Adam Carolla. Oh, and hated me. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a good... But she didn't look up from her phone, but I don't know. She could have made me. She could have made me. So Identifiable, yeah. Yeah. Maybe she, she says all the way down and... Uh, up the escal up the escalator. That that's the part she she mm-hmm. could have added as well. If she just went all the way and up the escalator, when it's not not if even you're a changing bathroom. Levels. This yeah, entire yeah, mall yeah. has no public bathroom in it. So it's really um, Caesar's fault. Yeah. I said to the guy, I go, well, she just told me four doors down, and he went, uh, <laughs> no, but yeah. and I was like, can you inform her that? Oh, There's no. no bathroom four doors <laughs> from where... First off, I don't even know what four doors means. We're standing in this hub, and there's right, does it, doors does everywhere. Does entryway to a store count as a door? Uh, I, I have no... I have no goddamn idea. Like, maybe that's just her way of answering everything. Like, when her mom, you know, if her kid says, where's the cereal? She goes four doors down. Do you know the way to San Jose? She goes four ways down, four doors down. Like, maybe that's just I think four doors in. away is maybe, like, the, the, the breaking point for most people whose cars are not charging to be like, oh, I'll just go. I'm far, far enough. Yeah, far enough I'm away. pot committed. I'm going to keep wandering <laughs> right. in this direction. Yeah. Do you turn around? Now, I wasn't going to turn around and settle her hash, but I was going to turn around and go, you do work at the information kiosk. <laughs> right. Like, there's nothing four doors down. And why would you say that? So what do we do in this situation? Mm-hmm. I, I go four doors down mm-hmm. and I pee. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's what the mail and, slot's for. And if for. I get arrested, that's her fault. That's on I blame her. it on her. Tape. Yeah, hey, that's a good. That's where the bathroom yeah. is, according right. to the information booth. I, that's what, and I did. I'm number two, but yeah, yeah it was. But the same yeah. thought. And you just say this is courtesy of the information booth. Oh God! <laughs> Why? Yeah. Like, See, this how is where you and I differ. You beat your job <laughs> because I would just go forwards and not to your bathroom, and then just go live my life thinking, oh, I missed it. But like, you know, also, I became strangely obsessed with this, and I literally stopped and I looked up, and I, I was like Mary Tyler Moore in an intersection. I was like spinning around. I threw my hat up into the air, and I was like, "There's nothing close to a bathroom or sign a designated. It's just store after store after store, as far as the eye can see. There's no. I didn't miss anything. You're a trailblazer, Adam Carolla. Thank you. You know, and by doing that, you're helping others. Because yes. when she says four doors down, they see the pile and they go, there it is. There it is. And there then is. They, they put some flop on top. Right. So, uh, an in house, not an outhouse. It's an in house. So you beat your pants. The, uh, no, I talked to the guy who said it's 250 <laughs> doors down and then you got a long escalator ride as well. And I just walked up to the first semi-empty Italian place and was like, you got a bathroom in there? And like, yeah, go use the bathroom in the back. So I did. 
So it was salt. Was that Italian thing. place four doors down? No, but he was oh. a paisan. <laughs> you understand? He thought. He understood me. You know gotcha. what I mean? He looked gotcha. like me. Gotcha. So uh, there was that. The other um, quest that I went on. <laughs> quest. I needed hash browns with my breakfast. Yeah. So this, this is, is an ongoing thing with Adam. Okay. This is actually is a quest. He he loves hash browns. Mm-hmm. Most of the restaurants he goes to served. Yeah, like you vegans. Six. Oh well, you probably you live like off this. hash yeah. browns, right? Yeah, I don't. I'm not even really vegan. As I I told you, I just have a vegan face. Uh, I don't. I don't. But feel, you're vegan. Yeah, yeah but I'm, okay, as fine. a vegan, I'm, vegan, though, I'm, I'm sure you, you can speak to this. So. Uh, okay, as a as a uh, a vegan appearing vegan forward <laughs> mm-hmm. person. Um, yeah, I don't really eat hash browns, but um, I think the debate that you're going to say is um, hash browns are home fries. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to say home fries every time. Oh, oh boy. And I, boy. And I Uh-oh. hope we can still get along, Adam. Mm-mm. Like, I'm looking at your logo. and I don't know, Chris, can you get along with that fella through all the garbage out of his car? <laughs> I, I couldn't. He drove like an asshole. You want to play pickleball I, I really with that guy? I did not like that guy. Well, there's your answer. <laughs> I know. I ruin menus. Wait a minute. I'm going to show you. All right. Pickleball. Okay, hold on. <laughs> My mom plays that. I really meant- Do you like cube potatoes more than hash browns? Well, here's the problem with me with hash browns. Yes, I do. Oh, but here's the, right. because I eat, I try to eat as healthy as I can. And so there's less like um, butter in those. Yeah, so that's true. That's why. No, there's, there's a bunch of seed oil and stuff. Taste wise. But you like it better. Taste wise, if it were not going to clog my arteries, I would, yes, hash browns. Okay. I, I give right. that to you. You made I a choice. That yeah. That's fine. But I, but I go, can I be happy with the home, with the cube potatoes? And I go, yes, I can. I can get my starches, and I can go about my day without <laughs> mm. feeling weighed down. Well, the hash brown. So, there's no place you can get hash browns in all of Caesars. It's all high-end stuff, right? Mm. So, I got the car charging behind Caesars. They have a whole car charge situation. You're stuck at Caesars. By the way, if you think about the Roman Empire often, when you're at Caesars, <laughs> do you think about it more or less? I had... I it's a tie. Did you hear about this? You're immersed. Like yes. men, yeah, men think about it regularly. I don't. Wanna, that doesn't ring true to me. I don't. Yeah, I agree with you. And also, here's I'm hash a, browns with that. Here's another question. <laughs> yeah. Do you think? Do you think there's something nefarious uh, afoot in this situation with me? I was all right. All of Vegas is a wild clusterfuck because of F one. Uh There's just, you can't get in. Between the goddamn red turn arrows and F1 coming into town, it's it's hard to get anywhere. That's why the red turn arrows, they probably programmed it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. F1, F U. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to find where the charging station is with my app. And the app says Caesars, you know, shops, valet or something. And I go to the wrong place in Caesars. And now I got to go back out. So now I'm trying to get back out, and it's just wall to wall traffic, oh. just just traffic. It's it's a T. It's coming out of Caesars into a street, but it's just traffic, traffic, traffic. And then I do what I do, which is, if it's all going to be traffic, you're going to have to just push your way in, just start zippering, make your way out, get out there, push it, push that bumper out there, make your own. Make your own space. I need to hang out with you more. Yeah, it's I, life on the edge. I was going almost three miles an hour, and I, I so I start to go out, and I'm I'm like I'm not cutting a guy off, but that's his. You know, I'm I'm putting my nose in. Yeah, and and he you know he tucks up behind me. Does he? Oh. I, I saw that douche, but fine. And I'm like, oh, the the charging stations are at the next Caesars driveway to turn into so i go down about 100 yards and i turn in and the guy comes right behind me and i'm like now we're just in the back of caesar's there's nothing going on so what's this dude doing up my ass and then he goes past me Uh as i start to slow down looking for the charging stations and he slides right in and charges his car oh now the only open space is next to him now i you know, once in a while you'll cut people off and you'll give them the hand, you know, ah, sorry, bro, or honk or whatever. But rarely do you d- then both pull into the same place <laughs> oh, and man. get out of the car. This guy's running a, a scam, which is not a scam. He's got himself like a fully electric Hyundai or something. He's driving for Uber and he's pulling in and just topping off at the Caesars while he's detailing his car. So he plugs it in. 
Oh, okay. And gets his uh, sham wow out, and he's going over his car, and then I have the uncomfortable part of pulling up next to him and getting out of the car and trying to figure out how to charge, because I'm not that good at it yet. Look, how's this machine work? Um, gets to, get, I get my charge going, and I split. Off to be insulted by the help at Caesars, right? Sure. Right. At some point, when I'm way down the strip looking for hash browns, I look at my phone and realize, oh, it stopped at 40%. It stopped charging. It's never happened before. You don't think. This guy? Did he reach over think. and hit stop before he before oh. he pulled out? Oh. I've charged a car 25 times. It's never just stopped at 40%. Yo, it's the modern keying of the car. Yes. Dude. And I, come on, bro. We're electric yeah. car bros. <laughs> EV gangster. Yeah. Yes. I never do anything EV. to a fellow Prius. I, I would never. Never. And I was looking at the phone the whole time going, well, maybe the app needs to reboot. I'm sitting there eating 40%. You know, maybe it's got to reboot. Ah, I got to the car. No. The thing that he pulled the plug? I, he, well, you can just push a button. I think he just button. pushed stop. I mean, he looked around. There was no one around, and he was pulling his did, car out. Did you, did you guys make eye contact at all? Because I, no. I kind of no. think he does. I mean, personally, I don't think he really cared. And I thought he was just doing his own thing and living his life, and maybe something happened. So it was just a coincidence. Because I think if he was really upset with you, he would. You guys would have made eye contact. This mm-hmm. situation has just uh, inspired a genius idea that we can make millions with: ring doorbell, uh-huh. ring car bell, mm. ring car bell. Did this guy yes. monkey with my charging station? I need to know. Yeah, you yeah. know how much content you'd have. Charge pirates, yeah. we'll call them. Yeah, this is an EV. The EV market would buy that because you guys are into electronics and gadgets. Yeah. I Tesla's actually have Tesla's cameras. Tesla's have a camera. All over. I don't yeah. think my car, like I would know how to work it or whatever. But now I go back after being gone for two hours and I'm at 40% and I can't make it back to Barstow off of, <laughs> off of, off of that. So um, oh, this guy made you stop in Baker. Made me why stop in Baker. Why is that an option Damn. to be able to turn it off at the machine? I don't even, I don't, I mean. That's I, again Caesar's fault. I guess if it were me and I was like in a hurry, I could go push a button, stop it, and unplug it and leave. I guess. I don't even, someone will tweet me and tell me whether it's possible or not. I'm just saying it's suspicious mm, that yeah. the <laughs> one time, this and the one guy. time only it stopped is yeah. when I was next to the super angry Uber uh. guy that I cut off. That's all. <laughs> And it wouldn't have taken much for him. It wouldn't have been a very bold move because no one was around. I was in the mall. I was 100. The door for the mall is like 100 yards away. If you're not around, you just reach over and touch it and get in your car. That's a pretty conniving, passive-aggressive move. Yeah. Not what the Romans would do. No. 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 They'd be so ashamed. All their golf carts were fully charged. Yeah. So now I'm walking around, and I want to know where I can get some MF and hash browns. browns. Because you have to now waste some time. In this town, right? Right. So Caesar's too highfalutin. Can't, uh, nothing there. No hash browns. A lot of high-end food, you know? Now, then there's there's the strip. You know, the strip's got Guy Fieri. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Guy Fieri's like, (laughs) I was reading his sign. It was like, drinks and food that are in your face. And I'm like, I don't know. Do I want this guy in my (laughs) face while I'm eating? Yeah, I, I, I would rather, like, if I had hair, like, that would, I would be a fan of Guy Fieri. I'd be like, I want to buy that guy's hair gel. Like, yeah. I don't want to eat his food. I don't want him on my yeah. face while I'm eating. Yeah. But I've, so I start looking around, and I find a place. There's a, I took a picture of the menu. I think we have it somewhere. It's called the Hash House. Hash, ha- hash, hash House. Hash House at Go-Go. It's very popular. Okay. Hash, hash is in the title. Hash is in the title. Mm-hmm. Hash House. So I go, well, I found my Valhalla. I am yeah. going to the Hash House. I'm going to order breakfast. And by the way, it's a little Guy Fieri, but it's like traditional breakfast with a twist. I, I don't want the twist. I want the <laughs> twist in the martini. I don't want a twist. I don't want a twist, and I sure as fuck don't want twisted. Yeah, Twisted. Yeah. You know, I tell... I tell you all the time they're words that societies glom on to. Like oh, with a twist. Twisted is our word for this time in our society. Like it, it, back in the day it was rocket. Everything was like rocket stuff. In the 50s, in the 60s, it was like rocket this and rocket that. Because we're in the we're getting 60s, we're getting into the space program. 
Then at some point, it became turbo. Everything was turbocharged, mm. and there was cologne. Yeah. There was a cologne called Turbo. Wow. Then Turbo gave way to Stealth. They're mm, making movies stealth. called Stealth. We had Stealth yep. Bomber, Stealth Technology. We started. No one said the word Stealth from the dawn of time until 1992. Mm-hmm. Then we all started talking Every, about Stealth, stealth Mode. I'm in Stealth. Dodge had a car called the Stealth. Yeah. We had fighters called Stealth. There was a movie called Stealth. We had Stealth Everything. Yes. And now it's twisted. Twisted is what they it's put in front of in, in front of stuff now. That's our word for this era we're in. But I go to the hash house and I go, I'm getting the breakfast with the eggs and the ham and, and everything, and I want my hash browns. And they're like, We have griddled mashed potatoes and uh cubed potatoes. And I'm like, But where are the hash browns? And they're like, We don't do you can show the next Yo, your name's oh, hash. Didn't, oh, I didn't send you. Yeah, there it is. Cube potato. I would be pissed. Cubed. I'd be cubed. pissed. That's all they had. Cu- no hash. It's cubed just out. cubed. What the? You I should shut that. that fucking place down. Yeah, That's I'll get Mark Garagos. I'll lawyer the fuck up and shut that place down. I'll own that place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got the word hash. My pilgrimage was at least a mile and a half walk to find the place that was inside the links that was over, you know, the directions. No one knows directions anymore. They could have said in the links, but they're like, go down there and go down the sidewalk about 80 feet. Right. there. And I could have said second floor of the links. But that's where I went and cubed. But is that that's the twist right there? It's just regular cute potatoes. Like, what's the twist? It's twisted, dude. It's twisted. It's, it's attitude. It's, it's about it. attitude. Everything is twisted. Twist is, it sounds like, it sounds like with a twist. It just sounds like, it just sounds like. <laughs> yeah, the, that sounds gay, but yeah. twisted is in your face. Like twisted oh, tea. Twist, oh, twisted twisted. Tea is a big yeah, thing. Yeah, twisted is, that's the new word. Everything is fucking twisted. Do you also notice people, and this might already be going out, but they would say, they say on steroids. Yes. Something on yeah. steroids with a twist. <laughs> yeah, that steroids. was that was about yeah. that's about twenty years ago. Yeah, we, we did the on on steroids would be between stealth, stealth. and twisted and mm. twisted. We're now in the twisted phase of society. Right. Everything's twisted. Yeah. It was a it was a simpler time when we were just living in the turbo phase. Regardless of what word they use, this is not okay. You can't call yourself hash house and oh. eat potatoes uh, and not offer don't. any form of hash. Not. It's like in and out if they didn't have a lawn, a, a, lawn, a um, drive-thru. Like a drive-thru, yeah. 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 It's Sad. false advertising. I, listen, nobody's more upset about it than I. Whataburger, the new vegetarian spot. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, you can't do that. Yeah, so it was a bitter, outrage. bitter disappointment mixed with, with an outrage. And, you know, it's like one of those Vegas places where they're pumping the jams and everything looks obnoxious because it's piled up. Yeah, a lot Super of flames high. on everything. Yeah. Ugh. Anyway, that's I'm my lot in life. It was difficult. Man, oh. I know what I'm bringing next time. I'm If I'm ever invited back, I'm yeah. bringing some goddamn hash browns. That's well, there's got, only that's one trip. condition to your return. Yeah. That's with the hash browns. Yeah. You pull <laughs> up with no hash browns. shit out of this place. If I don't see a skillet in your driver passenger seat, you're not coming through this I'm gate. noticing that your logo with the two L's together is really just a representation of the fibers of the hash brown. Yeah. That's, that's what, what that was, is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of people think it has to do with the BMW M nope. badge, but no. no Sliced it's, potatoes. It's yeah. a hash thing. Eric, you're talking about if you had hair... You you would uh you would not use you would not do the Guy Fieri style. Yeah, right? uh, that. By the way, uh, yeah, the hash. I would I would uh, the hash house is he own, he owns that place. That would make me no, Fiedius. No. You know, no, he, he, he owned have... his place, which had a long line to get into it. Oh, I know the place. And I think it said drinks and food that are like in your face. Right. <laughs> and it it's was, one of those places that probably, I think has like the angel wings on the yeah. outside where you stand and you get that photo op of the the big yeah. angel wings. So. I, it, um, so I was thinking about hair. Like, what kind of hair would would you want? Well, see, I I'm I'm all about like being being like cool with your your identity. So I think that bald people we are the last group of people you can you can still make fun of and get away with it. Like, no one defends us. No, like everyone, you know what I mean. <laughs> well, so, you've had ever since Jordan. Nobody feels sorry for the bald man. Yeah, the goat is bald. Yeah. Okay. Well then, you know, I'm not that good at basketball. Uh, they okay, so it, but I know that like subconsciously I do want to have hair because sometimes I'll have dreams that I have it again, and mm-hmm. I'll be like, oh, cool, I have so many options. So what hair would I have? If I would probably like, 
I don't know, like somebody like like a Brad Pitt type of style, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, know? the like long, but the trend flowy. right now, at least amongst the kids, is broccoli hair. Broccoli hair, oh, you know the look. Yeah, I think I saw it in the hallway this morning. Everybody has it. That's my son. Stupid. Yeah, Mahomes kind of has that, right? The broccoli hair. It's like it's like the trend of, of kids. Like they'll curl their hair on purpose just to get that broccoli look. They look like uh, a floret. I, I told him. I told my son this morning, get your goddamn haircut. Like, it's not, but he doesn't have it buzzed on the side. He just has the big pile. Uh, it's like some. My son's hairstyle looks like somebody went to a barber shop, swept up all the trimmings, molded them <laughs> into like a, a, a jello mold, and then just set it on his head. It's no hairstyle. I don't even know what it is. It, first off, it's got to smell. Yeah. It's got to be when you funky. put it in hot water. Yeah. Like broccoli. That's right. Yeah. When you poach it, it's going to smell. <laughs> yeah. So I. Uh, the whole house. I was like, get a goddamn haircut, would you? Oh, oh by the you- way. When you can get your hair cut, if you're not finicky about your hair, let me, all right, let me tell you something. I want to tell my son three things. Uh, don't get married to the lube when it comes to masturbating. Okay. Figure out how to do it standing up. The world will be your oyster. Yeah. And don't have a barber. Have any barber be your barber. Oh. You want to how any barber, that's total freedom. You want to know the freedom? I stopped at Barstow for, I had to charge a car for half an hour in Barstow on the way to Vegas. Started walking around the mall, saw sports clips. In Barstow, walked my ass right in, got a haircut. Because I don't care. You know, they got to start making like um, AI barbers. So that you could get your hair cut exactly the same time. Or exactly the same, same way. way. Yeah, every time. You know, they have 3D printers. Oh, they do. They got it They now. got that? No. But, but what they have... <laughs> yeah. They have is... I'm, I, they shear me. They don't really barber me. Okay. They do what they do. What do you ask Scissors. for? Scissors. They go... Because it's a new person every time. So what do you say? They have it on their computer. And the computer's a network, like nationwide. <laughs> and so they just pull your name up and they go, number two on the side, whatever on the top. It's, it's there. Oh, it's like it's medical a, records? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was a... <laughs> they put that on and then they go, this is your, this is your pattern? Follow this pattern? Yeah. Yeah. That's dope. Look, you're, you're, That's impressive. You, the, the haircut was $17. That's awesome. I know. I tipped her 22 because I was like... I, on oh, top of seventeen or seventeen to twenty two? No, no, I gave her, I gave her two, two. I don't like to lift my finger. I gave okay. her twenty two dollars and twenty two cents. Nice. You yeah. don't like to lift? <laughs> you just went two, 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 two. <laughs> yeah. Save yourself some time. Yeah. That's yeah, because this chick was living in Barstow. Yeah. There's like homeless people flopping all over the place. She had like the weird nose ring and the. Th- three colors hair, some tats. Like her life did not work out how she thought it was going to work out. Like she's working sports clips in Barstow and it was, it was hellscape ish like outside. Okay. So I felt bad for her and it's a $17 haircut. So that's, that's very generous. That's a, it's a high percentage. And well, th- listen, it's over a hundred percent, but I'm still out of there for under forty bucks. That's great. If you think about it. So what do I care? That's amazing. That's it's like it's like a car wash, you go through it and you just you put your head in it, or is it they actually do it with their hands? They do it by hand? Yeah, they're not that automated okay. yet. But All I right. but One day. I look forward to that day. Eric with a million dollar <laughs> ideas every time. Yeah. So yeah, I got my car charged, got my hair cut by a stranger. But I'm not married to my person, is, right. is what yeah. I'm saying. I know Don't, a lot of people who have, who have to schedule their hair oh like my three God. weeks in advance, and they're, they're at the mercy of this person. And everyone thinks their person is the best. How could that mathematically be possible? <laughs> what I'm saying is it's like everyone who gets reincarnated. Oh, I was a nobleman. Really? There was nothing but noblemen back in the day? Like someone had to sweep out the horse stalls, right? Like how can everybody have the best person? You got the best person. You got the best. Mm-hmm. They, they can't all be. They're just fucking hair cutters. Olga's daughter cuts my hair. 
Oh, yeah. And right now she is on maternity leave from her shop, so I will not be getting another haircut until after December. That's that. my point. Now, Emmy's you suffer. freaking baby is holding up you Dawson's hair. You suffer because of it. Being yeah. bald is so freeing, oh, you guys. Oh, it's liberating. It is, it's, or not caring. It, yeah, it, I don't care. Yeah, if you just shave your head... Because we all think that hair is our identity, and that's why it's so hard to lose your hair. Is that you go, oh, that that was that's how I you should look, and then you start losing your hair and you get sad. But if you're just like cool with your appearance without hair, mm-hmm. like that's where it's at. Yeah, you know, that's my, that confidence. My that grandmother, love. till her dying day, had her hair person. Yeah, and first off, I don't know what. Who cares? You're 90 years old. You really? You think half of it's a therapy? Guys? It's therapist. Her then person moved away to like Ventura County or something. Mm -hmm. And she had to drag her 90 year ass old bag of bones out to Ventura County once every two and a half months to get her hair cut because she said this guy specialized in fine hair. (laughs) She had that. Oh, she she didn't mean good hair. She meant fine, thin, thin, thin hair. And I was like, just go down to the fucking fantastic Sam's. I, I think a lot of it's ego. A lot of it, but it, but it's me, but it's me. Mm. I don't, I don't have any. You can't. I can't tell who cut my hair, when they did it, or who did. I go to whatever place is open, and I'm in there for under twenty bucks. Easy. It looks great. That, it looks great. That, so, you, you know, know? It took a long time to get that out uh, of you. Oh, that's you. all yeah, you wanted. Really that's that. all I wanted. That comes the from the uh, guy who has no hair. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So, Wait, I, so it's what is it? It's don't have a hair person. Be able to masturbate sitting up. Why? I don't get that one. Why? Because let's say you're on a really long flight. <laughs> <laughs> or you're being chased in the woods by a bear, but you're also horny, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, I it, like it. It's just, uh, it's too much work. The, the, the full, it's, it's easy. It's a lot easier to get busted in full recline. That's you know true. I mean, you could stand up. There's plausible deniability. <laughs> It, <laughs> it builds the glutes. Yeah, it's good core work. Yeah, big glutes are a tell though. Because you squeeze, you have to squeeze. Yeah, and then don't get married to lube. Uh, yeah, don't yeah, get, that's um, that's kind of the same. Yeah, like, you don't want to desensitize yourself. Two and one hair. Yeah, and try not to combine all of the tips. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> save it for you know different times of the day. But honestly. Women get married to their hair person, and at some point, their person like moves away, and then they have to follow them or fly them out or bring them out or whatever. It's always expensive. Fuck it, just go to a place that ends in the word clips, and you'll you'll be fine. That's it. <laughs> There's nothing so special about your hair. And by the way, it's not like one of these haggard bitches is gonna be like, "Oh, I've never seen this kind of hair before." That's all they do is stand there and cut every different kind of hair. They yeah. don't care. Then They'll the do best it. part, and if I, it doesn't work, it'll grow back. That's true. Uh, in some cases, yes. The thing that I miss the most, though, about getting my hair cut is I used to get a shampooed, and that was the best. Oh, the best! And I found because they give you a head massage. Oh, it's a, oh, I love it. That is the best. But you cannot let on that you enjoy it because I've talked to hairdressers. Oh. They go, when we notice that you enjoy it, especially for men, you got that's a when boner. I, yeah. yeah, I yeah. can't hide that. But I can, I can look like I hate it. My favorite thing when they do that is when they dry your hair. And then through the, the towel, towel, they like finger your ears. Yeah, oh. I like and that. Little in your butthole too. Yeah, butthole yeah. after that. Yeah, <laughs> the digit droppers. Yeah. That's why she got the big tip. <laughs> <laughs> You're like two, 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 two with the same for finger. The one. Yeah. <laughs> well, can we at least agree on this? My haircut is eighty percent clipper. Okay. Which leaves all the little fine, itchy hairs all over the place because it's the mm-hmm. clipper mm-hmm. hair versus you know pull it out cut with the fingers hair uh and when i'm done they always offer up some gel but i'm like i can't put the gel on because i got all these busted up pieces of hair hair in my in my head yeah you're gonna make yeah you're not gonna make them we're just gonna cement this to my to my head but i take the gel for the road just put a dollop in my palm yeah i'll take it it's free (laughs) it's hair dust all of you i remember that yeah, you remember those days, yeah. right? Yeah, it was the best. All right, should we do some, we'll take a break and do some news? Yeah. All right, we'll do that right after this. Morgan and Morgan, let me lay a stat on you. People 15 to 24 had the highest rate of emergency room visits due to car accidents of all the age groups. Oh, man, my kids are in that age group. Now I'm worried, but thank God there's Morgan and Morgan. If you're ever injured, you can uh, check them out. 
Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm, over 100 offices nationwide, more than 800 lawyers, more than $15 billion recovered for 300,000 plus clients. Morgan & Morgan has proven that they have a track record and they will fight to get you the full and fair compensation. They've been fighting for people for over 35 years. Racing my vintage cars is hard, but submitting a claim for Morgan & Morgan is easy. Am I right, Dawson? If you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to forthepeople.com slash Adam or dial pound law, pound 529 from your cell phone. That's for com slash Adam or pound law, pound 529 from your cell. This is a paid advertisement. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Base man, get it on. Ron from Florida. Hey, I got a survey for you and your crew. You can only choose one. You can either fuck a 10, but only once a month, or fuck a seven and a half, only once a week, or you can fuck a five every day. Get it on. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Eric Schwartz, how say you? 10 once a month, but also learn how to masturbate standing up. Yeah. That, that's exactly right. Yep. Then I you're go, fine. I go the 10 once a month. I look at it as a, you know, the, the reward for hard, hard-earned right. month. I'll go the 10 once a month. It's intermittent fasting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with your uh, but the sexuality. Se- the seven and a half is once a week because that's not you know. Nah, ten once a month. I can get through once a week. We're all I, going I, ten once a month. Ten Absolutely. once a month. All right. Yeah. Unanimity. Uh, also, from your act, as you were talking about being Jewish and Hispanic, at least my uh, stepfather is a stepfather. Yeah. yeah. Was you may have inadvertently ripped off my grandfather, Laszlo Gorog. What? Yeah. Was that all, that was uh, names or was that he another language? He was a Jew. Okay. And he was a writer. And way back in the day, he lost his vision. Not that he couldn't see, but he couldn't drive a car and he couldn't work as a writer anymore. This is early 80s, late 70s or whatever. Um, he was a Hungarian Jew. And he, Hungarians are wordsmiths. They love they love talk and, and turning phrases and, and making up stories. So there was a lot of Hungarian writers mm-hmm. in, in Hollywood. That's how he kind of, there was a network of them. When he came from Hungary, they took him in. And next thing you know, he's writing for TV shows. And he used to sit around and he would try to come up with Jewish, um, Spanish, like, words. Oh, really? And, like, a food. Okay. He came up with an enchilatka. Enchilatka, yeah. And he he was sitting around, and he would would try to amuse me, you know, with a Jewish version of... Any kind of Mexican food or something something like that. The only one I I remember is the enchilatka. But, I mean... That was literally, you were five when he was sitting around coming up with the enchilatka. But I saw you doing some of that, yeah. not the enchilatka, but in your act. I say, shalom, cabron. Right. Yeah. Right. That's my whole catchphrase. Yeah. Shalom, right. cabron. That's what Laszlo Gorog was doing oh, in Laszlo. North Hollywood in 1978. Well, you know, I've listened to you over the, over the years, and so maybe I kind of channeled Laszlo into my, into my, uh, that where Shalom Cabron came from. Well, I, I'm, I, I'm Jewish and my stepfather's Mexican. And I once got a, a role playing in this like independent film. I played a Jewish guy who wanted to be Mexican. Mm-hmm. And I improvised the line in that, in that movie. Right. And I said, he goes, Oh, you're Jew. Oh, you're Jewish. This is a, a cop interviewing me. He goes, uh, You're Jewish. Oh, I thought you were Mexican. I go, Yeah, I'm both. Shalom Cabron. That's, that's funny. That's how it came out. Yeah, it's funny. I could see him sitting there in his den on his chair watching, you know, daytime TV going, I got another one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and I was like, mildly amused, but I was like, 
I, he, I could see him trying to pass the time and, and work his brain out with this. Yeah. And Shalatka's the only one I remember. The though. bar mitzvah quinceanera, the albondigas, matzah ball, the matzah ball albondigas soup. Right. Um, there's, yeah, there's, uh, yeah, latkes and enchiladas. But I have actually heard of people making enchiladas with matzah. With matzah meal mm. instead of instead mm. of like um, mm-hmm. and they have and in um, Mexican culture they use masa we use matzah so it's oh. like you know what I mean you can make yeah. matzah with masa there's a lot of similarities and there's a lot of Jewish people in Mexico especially like Tijuana and and uh, and Mexico City really yep did not know that yeah yeah anyway I wrote it down because it made me think of old uh, Grandpa Lazo. Actually, right. you know, I know Eric's not vegan because he posted a video recently of him eating crickets. Right? Yeah, I did. I did ate you a cricket. like them? Uh, it's not something that I go, you know what I have a hankering for? is cricket. We should go out for cricket. I ate it, but I, it's not like... You wouldn't, yeah. You'd like, be okay if you never had it again. Yeah. It's like one of those things that just because how I grew up, you know, I guess if you grow up eating insects, you'd be like, oh, that reminds me of my childhood. I really like it. You develop a taste for it, but... Nah, it's like um, you eat it and you go, oh, it wasn't that bad. And it tastes like kind of like soggy popcorn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to me, just to get him to shut up is good enough reason. <laughs> it was already dead. It was uh-huh. already dead. Oh, well, oh get yeah, the yeah. fuck out of here. Yeah. No one cares. It's like a new source of protein, I thought you right? hunted one down like a gecko. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a hunter. Can we, uh, can we establish this in the sound department? Okay. I, tell me if you think, I, I, I think we're at this phase in our society i am in malibu half the time and i'm right above pch and pacific coast highway has a fire there's a fire department down about three four blocks from where i live and there's always some shit going down on pch there's a motorcycle accident pedestrians getting hurt there's always something yeah and these guys are firing up their sirens, and they're always just trucking down PCH. And it's loud as shit in my right. bedroom. Okay. And the other day, they fired it up at 4 a.m. Damn. Now, there's nothing on PCH on a weeknight at 4 a.m. But these guys hit the rollers, and they hit the siren. But there's no other cars around. Now, practically, first things first. Nobody drives around with their windows down anymore. The windows are always up. Right. And, and cars are insulated. Like, they're sound dead now. Modern cars are quiet inside. And everyone has the 18-speaker surround sound, Bose, whatever, with the earbud in. So I don't even know if we're getting the siren through the insulated car. But one thing cars have improved on is the sound insulation. Very quiet inside a modern car. And the other thing they've improved on is mirrors, mirrors, mirrors. You're picking up everything. I mean, back in the day, it was just a little chrome mirror, like the size of a compact, you know, for a woman's purse, you know, like it's hanging off the side of the car. was always facing the wrong direction. Yeah. We got big mirrors now. And it you can see everything. With cameras. And it's nighttime. It's pitch black outside. <laughs> Can we just hit the rollers on the ah. siren, but no siren, just the actual roller? Should we be firing up the siren at 4 a.m.? You fly out of Burbank. If you fly out of Burbank, I always see a sign that says fly quiet. I don't know what it means. I always stop talking when I see it. But if you look out the window, Burbank Airport, there's signs for the pilots, I guess. It says fly quiet between like 7... I don't know what it means. Like, don't throw revs mm-hmm. or pop a wheelie or something. Turn I don't down know. The I don't sound know. system. Like, I don't. Yeah, we need a cur- We need a sound curfew for sirens. I don't know what fly silent means, but it's there. So evidently, noise is an issue in our society. Yeah. There's, it's called noise pollution. It's stealth. Four a.m. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Four a.m. I just pop up and I'm like, huh? And I look out the window. There's nothing. It's all. There's not That's a car not okay. on the highway, but there is the fire truck, and that guy's whistling down with the sirens blaring. Could we have a conversation? Yeah, I think I think uh, you know firefighters. You, as a person who lives in a in a in a house, uh, I agree with you. But firefighters might be like, "Well, just build your house out of car material." I, we won't, <laughs> we won't have I would problem. be the worst fireman ever because when they reach for the siren, I'd be like, "Bob, really? There's nobody. And the fucking highway's empty." All right, here's my rule: sirens only while the sun is out. Once the sun goes down, you get more bang 
out of the lights. The visual? Mm-hmm. The visual. Once it's yeah. dark, the visuals pop. The visual doesn't pop when the sun's up. Yeah. So sirens at day and uh, the uh, rollers or the lights at, at night. I and it would be I, a much better society. I'm with you. At night, I notice visually the sirens more than I do because I listen to music. Well, in my we car. call we, we're calling them the sirens, but it's really we're lumping the two into to each. Yeah, you don't notice the sirens I mean, visually. No, I meant like the cars, like when they're when they have the sirens on, like the lights, like the lights flash. I know, but I, we keep saying siren is what I'm saying. Like oh. I'm trying to separate the rollers from the, the rollers, sirens. Me. Okay, right, right. The lights are the are the sound. Yeah, I don't think they're connected. By the way, I think you can turn the rollers on without firing up. I've seen that happen. Fucking four a.m., dude. There's nobody on PCH. I don't know where you're going, but do it with the rollers on, not the siren. That's yeah. all. Yeah, all I right. agree. I agree. All right. We're curfew, there. sound curfew, 10 p.m. That's right. Fly quiet. Yeah, fly Drive quiet. Drive quiet. Yeah, they should I have agree. like, or they can like, if there's like a high beam kind of roller too, like it's a little more amplified uh, visually. Uh, once it's dark and you have this red light that's swirling around on top of your vehicle, people get it. Okay. People come in the other direction, see that in the distance. The only problem would be blind drivers. Yeah. How, how are they going to know? But what about de- I don't know. Yeah, the blind drivers. All right, no yeah. sirens. <laughs> Rollers, but no sirens once the sun goes down. That's all. Okay. All I right. agree. I'm, I agree. We go. I'm all on right. board. All right. Um, you got, you, you're got. you talking about reclining in the uh, airline seat, and, you know, it's it's harder, much harder to masturbate mm-hmm. from there. But uh, mm. there was this viral video that was going around of this uh, woman yelling at the passenger behind her. And uh, from the from the sound of it, it looks like the passenger behind her was upset that she was reclining her seat. So she, as they, everyone was getting up um, to get off the plane, she was defending herself. So this video went viral. It was all over the internet. So let's watch it real quick. The whole trip, she put in my seat. You no, seen you it. seen it. I no, she didn't. Did. Yeah. She put, no. Yeah. My, I'm allowed to put my seat back. I'm allowed to put my seat back. I'm allowed to put my seat back. She's crying. Yeah, she's very upset. Listen, everyone, you're getting from... L.A. to Phoenix for $81. Just shut the fuck up. Settlers had to... People died. Yeah. That's you know, true. The That's Donner true. Party. I'd love to show the Donner Party all the footage of people <laughs> arguing on airplanes. You got from... You can get literally from L.A. to Chicago for like 150 bucks. Just shut up. Yeah. That's it's a true. miracle. Not okay. quiet. So it's not even worth the argument. No. I mean... Okay. Couple things. First off, you want to you want to <laughs> walk back at Caesar's Palace to, to talk to that lady because I have a little something called intestinal fortitude, dignity, and pride. And I believe in this country, <laughs> and I did it for her. It was really for her. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Selfless. Mike and I do this all the time. If you if there's no one in the middle seat, uh, and they want you to raise your seat, you know, when you're landing or whatever or taking off, uh, you recline your seat. Have your buddy who's on the outside aisle recline his seat. You recline your seat on the window and then take the middle seat and recline it with you. Then they'll never know. The differential is what people notice. They Ah, notice the difference. They don't know the angle. They notice the difference. So just (laughs) put the seats around you and recline them. And by the way, they recline an inch and seven eighths. So it's not like anyone can visually really pick it up. Only you would know that exact measurement. (laughs) I'm throwing a tape on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Now, as I've always said, the thing about these airline seats, they're so worn out now and they're so thin mm-hmm. now that if you're fat, every seat's a recliner. Because all you have to do is exhale and lean back, <laughs> your fat ass back and you will flex that shit three inches. Fat guys can flex a seat, especially when the action is kind of bad on them, like they get a little wobbly because they've been used so many mm-hmm. times. Big bucket head dude, just lean back and it'll it'll just go. Yeah. You'll wow. flex it back. Wow. Yeah. You vegans can't do that. I can't do that. Sometimes <laughs> I have trouble getting it back. You don't have any hair to help with the weight up no. top. No. You're I'm, vegan. You got no flex in your seat. I should pay less. Fat you know, guys should. can flex. Yeah, I should, you should get, pay you less. You should be discounted. Yeah. So they're actually. Use half a seat belt. So a couple things. First off, they're actually thinking of just removing all reclining seats from economy class in planes because um, it, it helps with costs. First off, the maintenance costs because these things are always prone to breaking. Mm-hmm. Secondly, there's actually a weight cost because of the mechanisms that quickly mm-hmm. add up. And uh, thirdly, there's a disruption cost because of things like this happening and them having to pay these people. Well, it's a never-ending 
retarded conversation about you can now recline your seats and then they walk up and down and police it. Now we're landing. You've got to get the seat, but the seats never reclined. You know, on a Southwest flight, they recline an inch and a half. So it's like lots of arguing, lots of waking people up who fell asleep on the flight to move their seat up an inch and a quarter. I agree. Just get rid of it. Yeah. Well, there's that. So People Magazine saw this video and they interviewed a travel expert. I don't know what makes you a travel expert, but um, this travel expert weighed in on on the etiquette. It says if your la- if their laptop is out or they have a drink on the table, now's not a great time to recline, and it wouldn't be okay to do so without giving the person behind you a heads up. Mm. And, and during meal times, definitely bring your seat back up if you've reclined it. Mm. I think as long as everyone is reclined then it's the same difference and we're so, all we're we have all to do fine it in unison. sometimes if somebody is recline, recline in front of me and i'm trying to work on my laptop i can't my it's too short like, yeah you know what i mean it's i can't um type because it's too, it's too far cramped. into my chest yeah yeah but then you recline your seat yeah you then can i buy can buy yourself yeah so some room you're right i don't know i say no reclining just get rid of it who are we or kidding you should permanently spirit, recline huh? the seats or have them all tilted back but yeah. then it's, have them permanently reclined yeah uh, then it's some sort of safety thing about for the exit or something i i don't know all i'm all i'm saying is is flying is exquisitely cheap now so we have people who formerly rode buses and donkeys on airplanes and that's why you're seeing all this mm. these people there's certain things where people will be sort of um you know, nice neighborhoods are nice because they're filled with people who can live in nice neighborhoods, and they tend not to be douchebags and litterers and let their dog shit everywhere. It's, it's like a self-selecting group. Well, if you're going to make air, if you're going to get across country for eighty-nine bucks, you're going to get a self-selecting group of bus folks on an airplane, and then we're fucked. This is what we're dealing with. That's Lots true. of white trash and hillbillies and God knows what on these airplanes. Sure. All right, let's uh, let's talk some college football here. So the Texas Southern University band was thrust into the spotlight over the weekend because there's a video that surfaced of one member getting into an altercation with a fan. So the person was playing, I believe, the tuba. Yeah, and um, and he was being heckled, and this is what happened. Is there sound? Damn. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, just gets punched in the middle. He's heckling. I mean, you're heckling the marching band, a, a player in the band, in the middle of one of the songs. Do we have sound? Yeah. Or no, no, there's no sound I, on this oh, video. That's no weird. Sound. I think that's his uh, his fingering hand. Yeah. yeah he, risked it all. he risked it all. Yeah. You know, I'm going to teach my son, uh, don't get married to one hairdresser, learn to masturbate standing up, don't use lube, and you got to be able to throw a punch while handling a tuba. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> you true. have to. And it's going to come up more than you think. <laughs> I, is that the worst instrument to to be holding while I, I fuck with piccolo players because they're usually yeah. diminutive Asian women. You know what I mean? The, 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 the tuba type. guy, first off, tuba guy's big because you got to be able to hold an 80 pound instrument. Mm. So you have, you have to be strong. You have, you have to have glutes. a sturdy base, number one. <laughs> number two, tuba guys are time bombs. They've been called fat their whole life. They're, they've been lugging around this the one instrument that won't get them laid, <laughs> and they're angry, <laughs> they're and they up. got a lot of pent up rage. Yeah. So they got a real short fuse. You know what I mean? Like if a guy's rocking an electric guitar, he's he's probably getting his dick sucked while At you're bothering moment. him. Right. You, yeah. you know what I mean? That guy doesn't have a lot of sexual rage. That's just a, hit a boiling point. You know what I mean? Right. So tuba guys have super short fuse. They didn't get laid in high school. They're not getting laid in college. They're playing at the Texas games, 110 degrees outside. They're wearing, you know, they're wearing 70. First off, they're they're wearing 40 pounds of polyester, right? Like the outfit, <laughs> those outfits do not breathe. You know what I mean? Yeah. That ain't a Tommy John t-shirt. It's layers and layers of polyester. Then you pack on a 80 pound tuba. I mean, when I saw, we went to the game in Texas. Yep. It was 112 degrees outside. And these guys are in boots with spats, long sleeves, jackets, and full tuba. And they march there. You're marching <laughs> knees high. Yeah, you're at you're at your limit. Mm, you don't right. need some fucker coming around and uh, tuning you up. This I guy agree. will never live it down. 
This guy who got beat up? Yeah. Is it, not only did you get beat up by a dude in the band, it's the tuba player. It's the tuba player and, who actually went and just finished the song even. Just after the guy went down, went back to playing. Punches you three times, gets back into... And the first punch, he didn't even know... He said the first punch, he didn't even notice it. The first yeah. punch, he goes... Yeah, yeah, you suck. You you don't know how to play that. Oh, for third yeah. punch. Fourth. Dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun, dun. <laughs> he hit him on the beat. I also like <laughs> He beat him on the beat. Yep. <laughs> now, French horn, you don't mess with the French horn because you already got the fist shoved into the horn. Okay. Is that the French horn? I with think the so. Hand? Is that the French horn where they ball up their fist and shove it into the horn opening? I don't know who invented that Trombone? horn. Trombone? No. Well, you don't mess with a trombone player because trombone's got range. He'll yeah. jab you. Oh, he'll just yeah punch you with the. <laughs> he'll jab you. The range. Yeah. Trombone is the guy with the toilet plunger right at the end. Okay. French horn is fist in the horn. You guys don't know what I'm yeah. talking about. Toilet plunger's trumpet. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. French horn looks like an ampersand, right? Uh, like that yeah, ampersand yeah, 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 yeah. And then you ball up your fist. And you put it inside the horn. So you're already in position. You're already locked and loaded with that <laughs> fist. Just... It's basically brass knuckles. Yeah. I, I don't know if every French hornist puts the fist inside of the... Find a person playing it, Byron. That's what Chris is talking about. Yeah. So you don't fuck with tuba because they're big. They're the biggest guys in the band and they're super angry. And they're overheating. Yeah. And they're sexually pent up. And then you don't fuck with the French horn guy because the French horn guy's already got a fist locked and loaded. Oh, look at that. And God knows, Who, there oh. could be a blackjack in that hand, a knife, brass knuckles. Mm-hmm. We don't know. Anything. Yeah, he I don't could like be it. robbing a bank in that thing. Yeah, yeah we don't concealed. know what's in there, but mm-hmm. you're going to find out if you fuck with him. Always go piccolo. <laughs> you go piccolo. That's what I do. Yeah. I'm going to tell my son that. Yeah, 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 another life hack. Yeah, another life you're gonna hack. mess with the bands. It's the piccolo. Right. Go find the piccolo. It's the smallest, lightest person in the band. Right. Mm-hmm. And also, <laughs> like this guy too. Make sure you don't have. You gotta have higher ground if you're getting in a fight in the stands. Like every, you gotta be in the next one up. Yeah, everybody yeah. loses if they don't have the higher ground. That's At right. From, from my, when I've seen uh, people in stands fighting, which has been a lot lately, by the way, or maybe they're just being filmed more. Well, it's a military thing too. You know, I mean, you don't walk into the valley. Right. You know, you know what I mean. That's essentially every bad movie where the Taliban has the high ground. You're fucked when you go into the valley. True. Right? Yeah. This guy's yeah. just not expecting. Like, well, I wonder what it could have been. Like, what he just doesn't like the song. Is it, was this guy t- heckling him? Unclear. What happened? Unclear. Yeah. Um, he doesn't like that team. Yeah. He's hit, he's hit, he's hit in himself though. Uh, so also in college football. So last week. Um, Colorado coach Deion Sanders has announced that he would like the NCAA and the Rose Bowl to reimburse his players after thousands of dollars of jewelry was allegedly stolen from the visiting locker room uh, during their game against UCLA. Did you see this? Yeah. LA's turned into such a shithole that even jewelry isn't safe at the Rose Bowl. Wow. In the locker room. In a lock. It's got the word lock right in it. I know. Yeah, yeah, these players looked really bummed out. There's like some videos of them. Oh, they lost too, right? Yeah, they did lose. Oh, man. The UCLA players' jewelry got stolen or the, the visiting, Col- visiting team, Colorado? Colorado, oh, Colorado. Yeah. oh, wow. So Deion Sanders is like, hey, they need to the NCAA. You guys got to reimburse these players because they, they had some pretty expensive chains. Well, then, and then how do we verify it? Like, do you think yeah. they have receipts? They have yeah. photos? No insurance. But then there's a lot of probably costume shit but people are going to claim those were real diamond studs and then people they're don't students, want to know right like are they gonna they be iced out i think well they're they're high profile now i mean your, your coach is Deion sanders yeah he has like a crucifix that's worth 500 grand swinging around his neck well i mean coach yeah sanders does so uh coach prime prime yeah so uh yeah i wonder but i wonder what the amount because you're gonna feel sorry the public is going to side with the kids that got their jewelry stolen. But then when one of the 19-year-olds said, I had $277,000 yeah. worth of jewelry stolen, it's like, dude, you're a college student. Right. Like, I had my Scooby-Doo lunch pail stolen, and that was devastating enough. So now we're yeah. not going to feel sorry for you if you inflate the price. Yeah, you got to be an realistic. Optics. You got to, if you if you are, you know, doing, uh, doing some dishonest stuff and taking money, then don't out yourself. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder who's still... Oh, I I know. Everyone who works there has got to be poor and 
stealing. I mean, and by the way, if, if kids are going to be traveling around with that kind of ice, then this is going to be a thing now. Yeah. I mean, Tom Brady couldn't even keep his jersey. That's right. Yeah. There's no, there's nothing sacred or safe in a locker room. And that's anymore. Pasadena. Pasadena's not no. known for crime. Or yeah, but everyone you know? who works at the Rose Bowl oh. doesn't live in Pasadena. Okay, they're more a little more South Central. Oh, so inside that's job. what I'm yeah. going. Oh yeah. Um, so speaker of the house, the new speaker of the house, Mike Johnson. Mm-hmm. So there's a so ever since um, he's been in the news lately, there's a resurfaced clip from last year where he and his son admitted that they monitor each other's porn intake. Mm. Yeah, so Mike, remember, he's, he's like, oh. tell my boy. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, well, remember, Mike, he's like, oh, everything you need to know about me is in the Bible, right? He's very old school, very <laughs> traditional. Right. So um, he said that he installed a accountability software called Covenant Eyes on his devices in order to abstain from unsavory websites. And so this is the quote. It scans all the activity on your phone and your devices, your laptop, what have you. We do all of it. And it sends a report to your accountability partner. My accountability partner right now is my son, Jack. He's 17. So he and I get a report about all the things that are on our phones, all our devices, once a week. If anything objectionable comes up, your accountability partner gets an immediate notice. Mm. We, we both got a clean slate. So what he's saying is everything that you need to know about him is in his search history. Yeah, and his son, and his son has it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know everyone. everyone thinks everything is weird, like... Remember when, oh God, I'm trying to think of his name. I mean, um, Mike Pence. Mm -hmm. Mike Pence was like, I won't go to dinner with a woman alone. It has to be me and my wife and, and the woman or whatever. And at the time he said that, everyone went nuts. Like, oh, get the fuck out of here. Come on. But now thinking back on it, like eh, everyone Might have getting me too and accused <laughs> yeah. of, of everything. He hover handed his dinners. We, yeah, we have, the, uh, we have the clip of Mike Johnson here. All right. Love it. And then it sends a report to your accountability partner. So my accountability partner right now is Jack, my son, right? And so he's 17. Ironically so he named Jack. All the things <laughs> I know, that are I was on our say that. phones or all of our devices once a week. If anything objectionable comes up, your accountability partner gets an immediate notice. I'm proud to tell you my son has, he's got a clean slate, all right? <laughs> but but we get, we get well, a Jack report and off. it says, hey, no, no uh, activity of concern. And it's really, really sensitive. It'll pick up almost anything. It looks for keywords, search terms, and also images. And it will send your accountability partner a blurred a picture of the image. And so Jack on occasion, I get one. I was just looking at the one from this week. I got on, on Jack and it said... This, this is the only one that may be questionable, and it's this blurred Im image of two, two women talking in a live screen thing, and I zoom in, and I have to unblur it, and it's, and it's two middle-aged teachers of it. Two middle-aged teachers? Yeah, go, yeah. go on. Scissoring. Matures. Matures. Scissoring. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Scissoring. <laughs> I bet, and look, Jack's 17, so Jack's got to be borrowing his friend's phones he is a, a burner. lot, yeah. right? He's, yeah. he's definitely he's got a, a burner. And also... <laughs> yeah. If I found out one of my friends had this covenant deal with their dad and they left the room and their phone was there, I'd be going to milking and popping and, yeah. you know, black and busty. I, I'd hit every, my friends would definitely pull my phone and go to every disgusting website there, there is on the planet and then throw the phone back down. It's kind of weird. Dad knew it. It's kind of weird. Like your dad is your cuck. Yeah. <laughs> I never use that word. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell so you dumb. my take. I'm 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 basically <laughs> agnostic slash atheist. Like I'm not religious, and 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 but I'm also done making fun of everyone who has a plan. I I really mm. am. In this fucking world where you just turn on the TV and people are just beating the shit out of each other for for no reason, and Hamas is beheading people and stuff. Call me. I'll take some boring shit. I'll I'll take the I'll take the religious guy. I'll take Mike Pence. Yeah. Who who doesn't who's traditional or religious or whatever. He doesn't uh, fine. Make as much fun of it as you want, but he doesn't pose a threat. He's he's one of the he's not out there littering. He's not tearing down statues. He's not looting a Walmart. He yeah. just has a you've relationship said, with his son. You said this before. Mormons make the best neighbors. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. That's where I'm at. Clear branding. Yes. <laughs> Very clear. Like he, he's not doing all this other stuff is that with what you're saying, right? He's not, uh, he's not involved with all. Well, it's, it's basically like he's a square. Like what we mm -hmm. would have said in the past he's is boring. he's boring and he's a square. But the alternative is what we're kind of living in and I don't like it. 
I want, want someone square. twisted, like, man. I, yeah. I don't want I, twisted. On. I want the squares. It's president with a twist. <laughs> yeah. I want Stealth. my neighbor to be fucking Squaresville, USA, not the twist. That's all. Or twist it. That's, that's what I'm saying. I want to get back to boring. All right. Uh, let's see. Kilmeade's going to join us in a minute. So I think we should uh, wrap this and give Eric some... Uh, Plugs Watch here. Watch special. Watch it special. You will be impressed. I guarantee you. Probably my favorite opening of a special I've ever seen. Yes. Yes. Thank and you, you. and you, you can watch it with your kids or whatever. Like people aren't really sophisticated comedically. You might not watch it. A special with you can watch this one because it's funny. It's visual. It's got something for everyone. Eric Schwartz. And uh, what you can do is go to ericschwartzlive.com for all the that's his website That's for all the website. live shows and all that stuff. And then the special's out uh, November 24th. All right. Brian Kilmeade just got a new book, and he's going to join us right after this. Hey, I don't know if you guys know, but it's See Better Drive Safer Month now at O'Reilly Auto Parts. They have put a spotlight on items to help you see the road more clearly. All month long, receive gift cards after rebate on select wiper blades and bulbs. If your wiper blades are streaking and smearing, well, they're worn out and they need to be replaced. But good news, you can get up to a $20 O'Reilly gift card after rebate with purchase of select wiper blades. Their professional parts people will install your new wiper blades and they'll do it for free. See the road better with new bulbs? Get up to a $15 O'Reilly gift card after rebate with the purchase of Sylvania Silver Star Ultra or select ZXE Twin Pack Bulbs. They'll even help you pick out the right bulb for your vehicle. Visit your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store for details. O Rewards members receive two times O Rewards points on select bulbs and up to four times points on cleaning supplies for your vehicle. Don't miss the See Better Drive Safer Month now. At your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store or shop online at O'ReillyAuto.com. Brian Kilmeade is our guest. He has another book out, Teddy and Booker T, How the Two American Icons Blazed a Path for Racial Equity. And it's available now wherever you find finer books. Good to see you, my friend. Thanks for having me on, Adam. It's is equality, not equity. I wouldn't do that to you. We're past equity in life. We're sure equality. Oh, did I say equity? What yes. Did I say? Oh, my God. Equality. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Boy, my brain has been destroyed by... God, if you just look at this one chapter we're in, I think equality and equity are probably... that's Those are the two words that are now meaning something that they've never meant in this nation's history before. There's no doubt about it. I mean, more and more... It's not a matter of how hard you're going to work. It's not a meritocracy anymore. It's the category you're going to fill when college is on down. Although I think, Adam, unlike other times when we visit, I think things are turning around. Unlike sitting there in a tornado of when are people going to wake up, I sense that people are waking up. And guys like, I mean, when Bill Maher sounds more like you than he does like Bernie Sanders, I feel good about America. No, I, I completely agree. It's sad that you have to be sort of hit over the head with it, you know, that people can't catch this stuff early. You know, it's what we always talk about whenever I reference Los Angeles or California, you know, well, we haven't bottomed out yet. And I'm like, why do we have to bottom out? Why can't we just see where we're going and stop going that direction? No, no, you haven't bottomed out yet. I always say, oh, it's like I was cleaning my son's room and I found some vials of cocaine and a couple syringes, but he hasn't OD'd yet. So I'm just right. going to kind of hang back until he flatlines. And it's like, right. so, why not get so him get help now? Out. Get him help now is what I'm saying. Well, I just think that people aren't going to turn away from Gavin Newsom. I mean, you must be astounded. I can't tell you many conversations I have with people that, they aren't talking like we are on an everyday basis and say, well, that Gavin Newsom looks like a good candidate. And I go, wait a second, what do you think he's done? I mean, just in terms of flip over the back of the baseball card. Don't just look at the picture with the donut on his back. Right. Flick, flip over and see what he's done. I know he looks the part, but we're not casting the job. We're actually interviewing for the job. So 
I mean, that's what people see. They see this guy has a good presence about him. Barack Obama, same way. The guy has a, a great uh, stage presence, beautiful smile. But then you look at what he's done or what he just said about this whole Israeli Hamas situation. We all have blood on our hands. Excuse me. I know you said it eloquently, but I don't think we all have blood on our hands after October 7. And that's what bo- that bothers me a little. That's why people look at what's going on in California. They see Gavin Newsom and say, I guess people in California haven't bottomed out yet because he might not be that bad. He's that bad. Oh, I I agree. I live I live it every day here in California, and it, it's it's an interesting paradigm. And I was talking to Doctor Drew about this earlier in the in the day that we're going for this style over substance stuff. Like your criteria for a guy who's making policy shouldn't be he's not fat and he looks to be, you know what I mean? Like. It's insane that we're putting so much into it's what I call the I'd like to get a beer with that guy. You know, Obama would be a cool dude to get a beer with. And I always tell everyone, you're never going to have a beer with Obama and you're not going to have a beer with Hillary Clinton, maybe a little Tabasco. And you're not going to have a beer with with Trump. You're not going to have beer with any of these people. So with that in mind, let's just remove you having a beer. Let's get that off the table. Now let's just talk policy. Can we just talk Uh, about economics or the border or anything? Forget about the beer. Can I build on something you're saying? Sure. The perfect example of what you're saying is Governor DeSantis. I've been, I've done about 10 features with him. He comes into diners, crowded situations. He puts a smile on your face. He looks people in the eye. He talks to them. But he's not going to hug you. He's not going to feel your pain. But you know what he's going to do? He actually wants to solve your problem. He doesn't really want to pat on the back, but he wants to get to work. He just wants to get to work. He's not going to say, you know, show me where your mother is. I hear you. You know, I hear your son sprained his ankle. But he's going to go, what's going on? Oh, wait a second. You can't get into school for what reason? Because it, let's look into that. What university is it? He, I, I constantly see him churning, solving problems, instantly reacting. But people go, well, he's just not warm. Well, I don't know. Just execute. He wants to work 20 hours a day selflessly when he could be making $5 million an hour as a Harvard and Yale attorney. But he's not. He's doing this. And people are debating lifts and issues. So I think we should go back to the execution part, not executing, but the execution part of politicians. Can you execute? And that's what we should be we should be great on. Yeah, well, I think the chickens are kind of coming home to roost for Biden, especially if you take a look at the latest polls. And oh, that my this is what happens when everything is a higher, a diversity higher, when you're going to have the most diverse cabinet. I don't want the most diverse anything. And by the way, I don't care if they're all Korean and grandmothers, as long as they kick ass at what they do. The the diversity higher thing is super dangerous and nothing happens day one. Like when you announce that, you know, everyone is going to be treated with dignity and everyone gets a, a chair at the table and everyone will be heard. And, you know, Joe Biden, you know, he may be he raised in the black church one day and ca- Irish <laughs> Catholic the next day, or, you know, civil march with the civil rights and drove an 18 wheeler, uh, you know, who. All right. It takes about this long for the bad policies to kick in. You, you know what I'm yep. saying? And day one, it's great because you have the first black female vice president. And you, everyone goes, oh, that's cool. That's that's day one. But I need to know where she, what she's going to be doing two and a half years from now. And I need to know what you're going to be doing two and a half years from now. And now we got to look. We got to see what this is and i don't even know i don't even know what biden's politics or even policies are it just seems to be whatever somebody wants to hear at that time except you except he doesn't care what you (laughs) he doesn't care what we think i'll tell you that he's all about green number one he's all about infrastructure spending other people's money he's he today he took a bow uh, so it's Monday. He took a bow for a $14 billion train. And I'm saying, who asked for this? We're right. not trying to get tra- longer trains. I didn't ask for this. Well, I mean, we have a situation where we have a president that has no interest in securing the country, has no interest in building up the military, 
We've been attacked 32 times in Iraq and Syria. Our guys and women are sitting ducks. And he's telling me he's got a bigger train for $14 billion. $14 billion. Are you kidding? Well, California, and more IRS agents. Uh, California just, I think, is $132 billion into our bullet train that not has Where not traveled that? one foot yet. It's from like Merced to, I don't know, Macon County or something. At some place, I've been in California my whole life. I don't even know where it goes. It doesn't go anywhere. It's billions overrun. And it's insane because you can fly on a Southwest flight for $89 and get to the Bay Area from Burbank, LAX, John Wayne, Orange County. Who is going to take a three-day train ride for more money? I have no... What, what it is is the train is... I, I grew up with one of these people. My mom is this way. They love the European model. And in the European model, there's trains. And they love that culturally they look at it as an advanced culture would have these bullet trains and we're californian we're sort of on the euro model so we want a bullet train because that's what the parisians would have so that's what we're going to do but we can't pull it off it's a mess and no one's going to use it and it once they start throwing the good money after the bad they just can't stop themselves and that's who we're looking at. When you say what his policies are, this is why Trump is surging. You know, he's in court cases, so he can't make a billion speeches to create some controversy. And today that's what he was doing. And they love going off on Trump. But everything that he's that Trump did looks better every day. And if you break down that poll, they ask people at different categories from safety, security, from war to taxes to acting, uh, acting in a crisis to the border. Every single one with all the attacks on Trump, he's five to 10 points above President Biden. And then Biden says, well, I got the Hispanic vote. I'm going to open up the border. Well, the Hispanics are going to love me. They hate him. It's down to single digits now between Republicans and Democrats. He's lost 12 points with African-Americans. Why, why should they be happy? I mean, so far, he doesn't crack down on crime. Most of the victims of crime are, are blacks or working class people in working class neighborhoods. So everything he's done has blown up and Trump is sitting back golfing going, why are my poll numbers going up? Yeah. The truest thing he ever said, and you remember everyone went batshit crazy when he said it, but he said to the blacks, what do you have to lose? That's the <laughs> truest did. thing he ever said. Like you guys are being decimated by the democratic party. It's been going on for 50 years. What, what could, what could be worse? <laughs> You know, what's so interesting is the average politician would be like, come to me. I'm going to make your life better. I'm going to build yourself out. I'm going to get your free phones. And he says, listen, I don't know what I can do for you, but I'm not going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see what I can do when I get in there. You know, like those uh, the historical black colleges came up to him and say, listen, every year we got to ask for funding. We're going to go under. He goes, why do you have to go back every year? This is great things. I'm going to get you. No I'm going to get your money now. Right. Normally, they would have been running on that for two years. He's going to make it's going to happen when he finally gets elected. And he did it. I think right now, I have no idea what the court case is going to bring. I hear all things across the board. I mean, I wouldn't doubt we're looking at a Trump, too. Uh, uh, you know, him being the 47th president right now. And I just don't know how many people in your state would listen to him. I mean, are, have we been to the point where, where where they would, if he became president, they would just ignore his rules and laws? Yes. Are, we, are we at that point? Well, we're at a point, and by the way, Cher wouldn't have to listen to him because she's leaving the country. And by oh, the way, she is? Oh, yeah. You know, the blowhard oh. celebrities always have to make the proclamation oh, yeah. that they're going to leave. They never leave, but I, I always wish they would. Just like their fair, you know, her farewell concert tour was 18 years ago, and she's got one coming this summer. You, you know what I mean? They just, she's yeah, a I procrastinator, know. that Cher. But- it's an interesting thing, and, I, and I've said it a million times, and I think it's why we're at where we're at. Like when during COVID, Trump sent a hospital ship to the port of Los Angeles, and of course, Los Angeles went, we don't need your hospital ship. So your policy, <laughs> here's what you have to have. You have to have a policy, not 
I do the opposite of whatever Trump did or wants. So if you have a border policy, then have a border policy. But it can't be Trump said build a wall and beef up the border. So your answer to that is no wall and no guards at the border. You can't just say I'm doing the opposite of the person I don't like. That will turn into failed policies, which we're now seeing. So Trump said border, border, border. You got in and said, no more border, and now we have a border crisis. So you have to think of a policy other than not doing. I mean, you can't. I think. Two two parents. (laughs) Parents can't do that. You can't say, my policy is the opposite of your mom's. You have to have your own (laughs) policy, although it does feel that way sometimes. But what I'm saying is, is have a policy, not just the opposite, because the people are going to get burned by it are you. Because that's all Biden has done is the opposite. He thinks, what would Trump do? Then he does the opposite. And now his polling sucks. So, so the amazing thing is, the biggest story in America is our borders collapsing. Hamas and Hezbollah want to come in here. Never before has the threat been higher, according to the FBI director. He has all the presidents of the Americas at the White House on Friday. They don't even announce it. They don't even bring up, as far as I could tell, control your border. You're overwhelming ours. If you don't c- control your people and get security at your border, no more aid. You're going to get some tariffs. I got to see some action. And I'm telling there's nothing. You have a chance to affect policy. I uh, Maybe because Trump did it, threatened them with tariffs, Mexico with tariffs, made them get 20000 at the border, did the remain in Mexico policy. Maybe that's why. But if you don't recognize an opportunity to control your border for your own election, for your own election hopes, I can't help you. I don't even know if he has any staff that told him these are the people that are controlling the collapse of our border. And a lot of them are emptying their prisons. I'm wondering what you think, because you're well versed in this. I feel like most Americans are sort of quasi aware of the whole Biden, Ukraine, you know, Hunter Biden, Jim Biden, you know, the the real corruption family here. I, you know, I saw Tony Bobolinsky on Tucker three years ago and I was like, oh, okay, I believe this guy. And I had Tony Bobolinsky in this studio a year and a half ago. And I was like, okay, this guy's credible. And Every day, the nothing burger keeps getting a couple more pickles and another slice of lettuce put on the nothing burger to the point where they can't his biggest supporters can't say there's nothing anymore. They have to go, well, he didn't directly benefit or whatever. But every three days, something comes out. I don't know that he's that Biden would even survive this before the election. That's a good point. Uh, Tony Bobulinski, too, wrestler at Penn State. I was talking to him. He went with Tucker, Tucker's shooter with better hair. <laughs> so I don't blame him uh, for going on with him. But I kept in touch with him. He's a inte- decorated intelligence officer who served in the military, then became a self-made multimillionaire. He has chronicled everything. He's got all the receipts. He's got all the items. He remembers the, the Joe Biden speech at the Beverly Hills Hotel, where right. he met right behind a right behind a banister, and they – They talked about everything. And now, get this, Hunter Biden is suing the guy who he dropped the laptop off to for defamation. By the way, he never admitted to his laptop. And now he's calling on the Justice Department to interrogate and investigate Tony Bobolinsky. That's the audacity of this crackhead. He's taking on his critics who are exposing his corruption. But I think it is coming closer and closer together. I laugh when people say, okay, he never has anything to do with you. You can't put him there at the same place. He had, there's, there's a tape recording. My dad is sitting right next to me, and he's not happy. And right. we, we Bidens don't forget. And then what about Joe Biden? I had no idea about his business practices. No, you were at dinner with the businessman. We have the receipts. But we didn't talk about business. We talked about the weather for two hours. So these are the craziest excuses. If your kid was making these excuses, you'd say, stop. You're digging a hole. Instead, you have Democrats saying there's nothing there. One brother lent 200000 to another brother, and he paid him back. Okay, show me where that loan was, what it was for, where did the original 200000 come from? They're trying to get to the bottom of that, but no Democrat's curious about that. The only thing people say to, hey, he was in private business. Okay, if I elect somebody, if I'm going to invest Adam Carolla and you're doing international business with China, 
and you don't want to come clean on it. You got these pseudo accounts that I can't track. I'd go, what's what's with you? And they go, well, Trump has his own business. Why aren't you upset about that? Because Trump puts his name on his business. He's got a hotel in Turkey. He's got a he's got a golf course in Scotland. He's got huge buildings in New York, and he aspires to build one in Moscow. What's the secret? What does that mean? He does business, is going to put it on hold, and wants to run the country. This guy denies everything, and then you have to uncover it all, and he wonders why we're suspicious. I don't know if I helped you at all, Adam, but I feel better. (laughs) Well, as somebody smarter than me and has been brought up a time or two, uh, Trump has a business. Joe Biden does not have a business. So what business is he doing (laughs) of with no business, which is there's a big difference between somebody's doing business. I listen, any business you do with Ukraine, any business you do with Russia, any business you do with China, it's not going to come across as squeaky clean. I don't care how legitimate you are. Yeah. I, don't, I don't care if you're Nike. I, I don't care if you're Apple computers. There's just going to be some stuff going on because that's how those nations work. But at least have a business. Joe Biden right. has a crackhead yeah. son traveling around on Air Force Two. And the real question is, is yeah, no Democrat's going to admit it. But when is CNN and the Los Angeles Times, when do they start slowly waking up? They went from this isn't happening to, well, maybe it happened, but he didn't directly benefit to, from it to a kind of a slow tacit agreement that I guess it's happening, but so this is what politicians do. When do they turn on him? Because I've always said when they, when CNN turns on Biden and they're starting to, but when they really turn on him and start getting into all the pay for play and everything, that'll be it for Biden. Adam, I think it started with Axelrod. Axelrod came out and said, Joe Biden is the only one who could stop Joe Biden for running. It's Joe Biden. He has to ask himself, is this in his best interest? And is it in the best interest of the country? He's a very respected uh, political guy that got uh, Obama elected twice. He never really was a fan of Biden. But that's almost the go sign to say, go have at him, everybody. Because if he won't do it voluntarily, we're going to embarrass him into doing it. And I think personally, it won't be the scandal that gets him. We're going to follow this now that they're, they picked a speaker and, and stopped that ridiculous infighting that they had. I think we're going to see people start writing about his failures, you know, him losing himself in the middle of a sentence, uh, one more fall that might happen. I mean, they've already reduced the stair size. They don't let him, we don't see him walk anymore. So I think that when they start talking about his diminished intellect or if some aide comes out and said, you know, Joe Biden was falling asleep when I was briefing him. It's where he's really too old. Then they'll have to do something. But uh, there's something, the problem the problem with the Biden stuff is the secrecy, the pseudo accounts. We didn't even bring up the pseudo names. Do you know that Hunter had an alias email and he was he was CC on 80,000 emails having to do with the Ukraine? Oh, my God. Tell no. me that, that isn't. Tell me that's not a, a worry. Well, listen, just the thing where, look, you have a job. I have a job. Everyone has a job. You get paid. Sometimes you get paid in different ways modalities but there's no scenario where i get paid except for we make the check out my sister's name and then my sister gives the money to my brother-in-law and then the brother-in-law cuts me a check that's all you need to know when when there's a interruption meaning if you are traveling across the border into mexico or from mexico in the united states and all you have is an empty pinata and a sombrero on the back of the car, then you drive across the border. But yeah. if you have fentanyl or the pinata is filled with fentanyl or you have cocaine or munitions, then you tunnel underneath the border or you go into a safe house. Like you go, you avoid. When you're just getting paid, you're just getting paid. Hey, I did I did yeah. a speech in the Ukraine and they gave me fifty thousand dollars. I just get paid. But my not my grandmother doesn't get paid and then cut a percentage off to my grandkids and then the grandkids account with, with a company named after them. That's not how it works. It, and by the way, who's not sophisticated enough to figure this out or are they just turning <laughs> a blind eye to it? Cause this the is, blind a, eye. this is classic stupid or liar. Either CNN right. is lying or they're stupid. 
Remember, uh, Tony Bobulinski said in his last interview, hey, Jake Tapper, call me. If they wanted to get answers, Tony would tell him in two seconds, what do you need? I'll fill in the gaps. He filled in the gaps for Ron Johnson. I'm sure he's helping James Comer. He, he's a patriot. And I think, I assume he's a Democrat. And then he said that, you know, I'm doing this deal. And then I'm realizing, you know, your dad's running for president. Do you know how bad this looks? And he, they, Hunter didn't care. And I think on some level, Hunter's trying to blow up his dad. But, and, you know, Dr. Drew would be a better guy to talk to about that. But I think on some level, this guy wanted to get caught and wanted all this stuff exposed. And the other thing is, I'm a little familiar with uh, addicts uh, being in and around my family. The last thing you want to do is put them under high stress. That's why they often have relapses right before family, the big events like Christmas. And if you are know your son has got huge problems with hookers, gets naked, uh, get buys guns, and also buys crack, you go, okay, go over to Kazakhstan, meet with a crooked billionaire, come out with the money, deposit into this, this crazy account, because we're going to need it to open up a, another uh, account in China. You would never do that to it. somebody that you like in your life. You wouldn't put them under that type of stress. And I just don't understand that. I, I can't get my head around how this all happened. I, it, it seems like something you would do if you felt like you're above, I don't want to say above the law because it gets trotted out too much. But if you just thought, it, it's like if you lived in a town in the 50s and you knew the sheriff and you knew the mayor and you knew every foot patrolman in that town and i would say to you come on uh kill me let's go uh let's go into this movie theater and watch a movie and you'd go but it's closed i'd go that ah, we'll just break in and watch a movie and you'd go oh, we're gonna get arrested and i'd go don't don't worry about it don't worry about it i think that's kind of the way joe biden felt i just felt like he felt like he was so connected and so entrenched in this system and knew so many and knew that CNN and all the you know, LA times and New York times, but Adam, he's right. Go for him. But Adam, oh, he, he is right. right. No, he is right. Because and the that's FBI why covered it. for him. The IRS right. covered for him. The, ju- the judiciary, the, the justice department covered for him. They all covered. For him. Right. No, but they never thought that they, they were all getting in trouble because of it. He's not wrong to think the way he thought that's, that's yeah. why he did. So, you know, people go, why would he do it? Or wouldn't he be scared? You wouldn't. It's just like the small town in the 50s where he knew the sheriff and the mayor. Like, no, I wouldn't be scared. The guy's a friend of mine or he's on my payroll or I got a bunch of shit on him. Yeah. So he's not going to do anything. Yeah, that's, I know. that's what he thought. And now that they don't really need him anymore and maybe he's a liability even they're the cover. They're not going to run cover for him anymore. The only, the only mullet, the only thing that they didn't plan is the incompetence of Camilla, Har- uh, Camilla Harris, yes. Kamala Harris. And that's the thing that's screwing them up. Who's going to be the one to say, Kamala, you're out. Let's bring in that white guy, Gavin Newsom, because we know we're all about equity. <laughs> and all of a sudden that's not going to work. Could, I mean, could that work? That would be crazy. Number one, she probably wouldn't step aside. What does she care? No, no, I'm next. Right. And then Joe Biden's got to step aside. So the only thing they didn't plan on, they don't have, let's say, this Governor Bashir in Kentucky. Seems like a good guy. I don't know if he's going to win or not. But he's pretty much a moderate from Kentucky. Like a reasonable guy. If he was ever Joe Biden's running, Joe Biden would have been out already. I mean, he would have been gone. Right. But they just keep looking at her. And, you know, it's 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 a, it's a horror show. She did that, you know, back in the day, Letterman was on at... Uh, 1130 and they were going to put John Stewart on at 1230. This is years and years ago. And John Stewart was 30 fresh, good looking and funny. And Letterman was like, uh, I don't think so. I don't want, <laughs> I don't want this guy yeah. at 1230. Every time I have to renegotiate a contract, I don't want to have to think about them going, you know, we could get this John Stewart kid. The kids love him. He'll do it for a third of the price. So he put Craig Kilborn in there, who is the Kamala Harris of late night hosts. And yeah. in a way it's kind of diabolical. It's like, yeah, if you had someone who was kick ass, competent and sharp tongued and sharp witted, holding pressers, taking care of business and they were behind you. Yeah. He'd probably be gone by now, but they, she managed to make the one person who was less competent than he, his vice president. 
back to equity. I need to. I promise it'll be a woman, and I promise it'll be a woman of color. Right. Goodbye, Elizabeth Warren. Goodbye, Governor Whitmer. You know, people that were they were conversing. Whatever you think of them, they de- they definitely understand the policies. Well, I actually don't know about Whitmer, but Elizabeth Warren does. Right. You know, even though you probably don't agree with them, nobody got doubts her competence. Right. She would have been fine. She would have. She would have probably taken over by now. Yeah. Uh, no doubt about it. But he put himself into a corner. And that's what happens. I just saw this thing by Victor Davis Hanson. He was just talking the other day. He said that at Stanford, they were bragging that only 22% of their admissions into the law school were white. Okay. And their engineering school were white. They were bragging about it. They also said that they don't really count SATs. They talked about diversity. And then they went up to some CEOs in Silicon Valley and they just said, who do you look to hire? They go, we don't look to hire Stanford people. Not anymore. Right. Because we know they're not hiring on a marriage. They want the best people. Right. Yeah. One day we'll do a separate pod on this diversity hire stuff and how it's just set right. the movement back. It's really it's it does so much damage and it's so insane. And the fact that we cheer it on is the most insane part. Let me give you a plug, Brian Kilmeade. Teddy and Booker T. How two American icons blazed a path for racial equality there you go and uh, brian always writes a kick-ass book i mean six times new york times bestseller list you can't go wrong uh hope we can talk oh website brian kilmeade k-i-l-m-e-a-d-e dot com is where you go always great and the only thing i think it it fits with it the only thing that fits with what we're talking about a lot of it is that he was a guy born in a segregated south who was a slave until he was nine he ends up being one of the most respected people and greatest educators in American history. He could walk into Ireland or Germany or, or Scotland or, or Britain and be famous. And he would not make excuses. If people didn't like him because of his race, he'd outwork you. When people went to his school, they'd have to learn a trade just like you did. And they'd learn academics. And he says, if white people aren't ready to hire you, you have to be invaluable. He would not let anybody make any excuses. And that's a message a lot of people don't want in this country. And that's why I have Mike Rowe on the back of the book. I go, Mike, he's all about blue collar jobs. Be ready for a white collar job, but be prepared to do a blue collar job. You're never going to be out of work. And I just thought when this guy makes his life, when he was born a slave, literally no shoes until he was 10 years old, slept on the floor. I don't think we have any excuses. And get this, Adam, he loved the country. Yeah. Booker T and had a great backup band, the MGs as well. Song that's and a really good wrestler. Green on you. <laughs> uh, thanks, Brian. Always great getting caught up, and I hope uh, I'll see you soon in uh, New York. Uh, absolutely, Adam. I look forward to seeing you again. Uh, take go care, up, my friend. Him. Brian Kilmeade. All right, let's see. Eric Schwartz, we know where to find his stuff. Sacramento Punchline, I think the shows are selling out. That'll be November 17th and 18th. Maybe a couple of tickets left. So uh, come say hi. Fargo. North Dakota at the Fargo Theater doing stand-up there November 30th, and then Nashville at Zany's, and then Huntsville. Just go to AdamCurl.com for all the live shows. And until next time, it's Adam Curl for Chris Max Patton, Eric Schwartz, and Brian Kilmeade saying mahalo. Mahalo.